Check. Now you can hear us. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show <laughs> and welcome to yet another episode of Unmuted. Uh, just pretend like we uh, we didn't actually mute uh, on the 68th episode of uh, of the show because um, that would be bad. That would be that would just mean that like I'm I'm uh, bad at my job. So we didn't do that. Um, uh, play the video. I'm not playing the video. <laughs> We're not playing the video. For those that don't know, Khalid Tamimi sent us a video. For every time I mute myself, he yells at me. Um, but shout out to everyone in the chat. Uh, we got Pama Jabber in, uh, <laughs> in, on Facebook. We got Mike on Twitch. We got uh, Max Adam on YouTube. Roxanne over on Facebook. So um, what we did was, uh, if you guys could see on the, uh, in the chat, everyone uh, from all the different platforms, uh, as long as you're on chat, it comes up on screen and it comes up right here, so we get to, we get to interact with you wherever you are. And um, yeah, like I said, episode sixty-eight of Unmuted. I uh, I did not mute myself for the record. And um, we have Carla from Asper Casper here uh, on the show, right next to me. We're gonna dig into a. There's a bunch of surprises and a whole bunch of stuff for the scene, a whole bunch of stuff for music. So. Um, Wherever you are in the world, just uh, give it a share, give it a like, support independent music, and let's let's dig into a, a sick conversation with Carla. Hit the intro. How's it going, Carla? Yeah, it's going well. It's going well. I didn't mute myself, right? No. <laughs> there was no. There was nothing wrong with anything. You're a human being, and that, that's the beauty of this show. Yeah. So. Um, for those for those that haven't been around for a while, uh, the show actually got called unmuted because of just how many times I muted myself in the very beginning. Every single time a guest would talk, especially before I got any microphones and stuff, I would I would mute myself so the guest could talk and I wouldn't have background noise. And then when I'd respond, I'd be muted. So I've JM, seen- uh, the guitarist in, in Spengali, was like, "You should just call the show unmuted." Because it's cool, like it's unmuted because you're an idiot, you mute yourself. But also, like, you speak your mind and it's a cool platform to have. I think it's kick-ass, the name even. <laughs> and the fact that you keep muting my mistakes. Exactly, 68 genius. episodes and I mean, I've been doing this for 14 years. You need to mute years. to unmute, you know, that's the beauty of it, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, but thank you for being here regardless, man. I'm so happy to be here in person. Last time I was in Berlin when exactly. we had this yeah. So for, for those that might have not seen uh, episode 24 with you, uh, if you could just give a little introduction to yourself. Yeah, sure. Um, Asper Casper here. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm a singer-songwriter. Uh, I've been in Dubai for 13 years, kick-started my music full-time six years ago. It's like a midlife crisis at 30. And it's been one hell of a ride since I uh, released an album that made number one iTunes Middle East, so that's good. Been releasing since, slowly but surely. Um, and yeah, now, and then last year I went to Berlin, technically moved there. So I'm living between both, but being here just for a short time, knowing that I'm going somewhere else somehow feels better than usual. It feels, it must feel different at least. It does feel, I'm, I'm, I have a, I think after 13 years, I just had had enough, but now that I'm here technically on vacation, yeah, it, it feels lighter, you know, so it, it's good. It's good. I haven't felt this way towards Dubai in a while, you know. Dubai is a is a is a difficult city to love. Like when you when you you love it, but it's also it really really <laughs> makes you work for it. Yeah, it's world just making enough money yeah. <laughs> to survive, whereas the switch to music sort of reveals a lot about it. And where I'm at now, it doesn't serve me anymore. Yeah, you know what I mean. So uh, let's talk about um, about moving to Berlin because we touched on it in the last episode. But yeah. now that you've already been there and then got the chance to come back for a, a little holiday vacation kind of thing, how's uh, how's the switch been? It's it's been different. I feel uh, like I genuinely have to split into like two different people. There's a lot of lot of. Uh, like just differences between here and there. You can imagine, uh, be it driving a car or walking or the freedom element is insane. Yeah. Um, and then you see that sort of freedom of expression translate into people's art and music. So that was very eye-awakening. Um, I, I literally came back here and I sat the band down and I'm like, guys, 
we gotta up it. Like yeah. we really have, like <laughs> yeah. compared to the stuff you 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 see there, it's just so unique. It's too unique because you it can be whatever the hell you want it to be. Whereas here, you know, we somehow are a bit, you know, boxed up. It's or still controlled. it's still within the confines of like very uh, very not conservative, but very like. Um, Traditional. Yeah, I think it's us though. I mean, the music is coming through us, and yeah. we're we're sort of. I feel me brought up in the Gulf is is you know pretty much being brought up in a in a box with limitations, yeah. and you know I think it's good for everyone to just break out of this. Um, it's harder as you get older, obviously, to break out of any habit or anything. Yeah, hundred percent. So so now at least going there and seeing that like I'm it's what I want to do. You know. Is there something that has already changed in your like everyday life? That that is a direct result of moving there. Um, I mean, yes and no. Uh, the yes goes for the constant walking and exercising and and cycling and you know an appreciation for nature that yeah. I was missing here, and just maybe also this Corona lockdown thing. It got me writing songs like there's no tomorrow. So I think just being there was inspiring for me and then having to be at home most of the time yeah. just sort of got me to sit down and do something that I love with my time and it just worked out well. So yeah, definitely that was something I, I missed. Usually when I go to Lebanon, I write, you know, I, I rarely write here. So it doesn't inspire me to be yeah. honest. So Berlin's having the same effect. So that's a good sign considering the fact that I just moved, you know. That's crazy that you say that because I never thought of like a location when it came to... Uh, to writing or anything like that like I, I there are triggers but I've been here for so long I've been in the Gulf in general for so long that um, every time I am out I just want to do everything that I can do here <laughs> <laughs> I just the, the location like I, I don't think of like writing lyrics or writing music at all when when I travel but I, I think having to like put your mindset in I'm moving somewhere new that must be insanely crazy it's yeah I mean yeah, it is. It is. It is. Especially after being here for 13 years. Like this is by far the biggest change I've done in the last 13 years. Yeah. Um, but I do believe that things happen for a reason and the way it worked out was too smooth. So in a good way. So that tells me that that is where I need to be. So and, and when stuff like this happens, I just surrender to it because I know it's the right move. Like, you know what I mean? It, it reminds me of what you were saying about when you took the leap of like, I'm going to quit my job and do full, full music full time. It's, it's, you said uh, something along the lines of like, if I didn't do this, I'd always look back and say, I didn't do it. Yeah. Was it something? A hundred percent. And I remember I said, it's, it's, it feels like going against the tide sometimes, yeah. you know, it's sometimes it really, things feel so forced towards the end, you know, uh, you just need to make that change or else you're going to drown. And this is the same thing, like this opportunity to move on an artist visa to Berlin just came just in time, honestly. Like it literally saved me yeah. from having my second meltdown at 36, you know? Art, see, artist visa sounds so uh, nice to have. Like to just the acknowledgement of it, just just the sheer acknowledgement, not, not what you could do with it, not like uh, what uh, benefits it gives you, anything like that. Just the fact that artists can get a visa. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't agree. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, you sadly... <laughs> Sadly, we don't expect much as artists here, but to get an opportunity like that, just for being an artist, yeah, irrelevant of where you're from, who you are, you know, obviously they took all the work we've done into consideration, but to be handed something just for being an artist is insane. It's yeah. incredible. Um, but you know what? It has to be normalized that we deserve uh, big opportunities. And I've always said this, like in places like Berlin, from what I've seen personally, not to like generalize, we're artists. Whereas in the UAE, also based on what I've seen, most of the time we're entertainers. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're mm -hmm. entertainment. So that difference, like going places to Berlin and literally no one's on their phone and you're singing or, or, or a spoken word or dancing, whatever you're doing, you have people's full attention mm -hmm. because they are there for a reason, you know? Whereas here, most of the time you happen to be where people are already are. And that uh, sort of, see what you mean, you're either background, yeah. you know, music or you're a plan because something's happening in the UAE. Um, but yeah, I do feel this big difference. Again, not to generalize, there are so many incredible, um, like we have an incredible following of people who genuinely believe in music. But there it just seems to be everywhere you go. 
like that respect for art yeah. is just embedded in the culture. Yeah. I think also the the longevity of their scene, like just how long they've been around. Yeah. Uh, and g- gives it that, like just s- as simple as like having a venue, <laughs> you know? <Yeah. laughs> it's, it's, Berlin is the venue. Yeah. Like wherever you go, there's music. You don't need a permit, you know? Like you, there's a patch of grass. Let's play music there. <laughs> yeah. you know? Oh, look, we can climb up the street. Let's play music there. Like it's yeah, pretty much that. Awesome. Everywhere you go, there there's a girl who does funny skits on, on Instagram and she was she's uh, Arab and she's walking through the park and there's people making music everywhere and she starts yelling in Arabic and Shami see it what's going on you're like go home go home you know <laughs> but it's everywhere you know it's crazy and crazy beautiful that is so yeah I'm happy I'm, I'm good there and that's why I think I feel inspired to to just make music so um, we'll, we'll jump into some Asper Casper stuff uh, but I want to I want to talk about that energy that you brought back. So, um, Corona things happened. Uh, Corona things. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Corona sh- things. A little bit of thing happened. Um, a global so not, pandemic happened. We are so not cool. Like <laughs> <that>. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and um, and kind of put everything on hold. And you thought of, of coming back for for a little while while uh, everything opens up slowly uh, before before going back to Germany. So, what was what was the thought process for coming back to Dubai? Oh, that is a tough one mm-hmm. and an intimate one. All right. Um, so there were t- two factors. Uh, one of them was that I was managing a long distance relationship between mm-hmm. here and Berlin. So I was supposed to come back March and then uh, the pandemic hit. And then I ended up obviously pushing it to the first chance I could come, but then it ended a week before, <laughs> but I came anyway. <laughs> and also oh, wait, the relationship. Oh, ended? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, all right, that was a curveball. <laughs> you were building up to something else. I didn't realize. I was a week before coming. <laughs> okay. Uh, again, everything for a reason. And then at the same time, because of everything that's happening in Syria and Lebanon, my mom has nowhere to be yeah. except here because she has a residency here. Uh, I sponsor her. Uh, and she can't stay more than three months in Berlin without leaving for three months. So now for the next while, we're going to keep doing the three months here, three months there to, mm-hmm. to basically for her to have a place to stay. Yeah. Um, so that being said, like giving into this thing that I can't change, like it's sort of my way of doing things when my hands are tied and just yeah. trying to make the most of it. And yeah, so I'm here and, and making the most of it. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Yeah. Cause there, there's two things there, the, the, the energy that you brought back and also, and I always, always stress on the idea, um, because a lot of people, a lot of the tribe is, uh, is from outside the, the Middle East and stuff like that. Just highlighting the idea of like, we've if you physically have nowhere else to go, you know, like you can stay in this place for more than X amount of months after you get uh, X amount of things to get your visa. You know, like um, I was, um, I recently had, yeah, I recently had uh, Fadi Shami on the, on the podcast and he was just saying how crazy it was to even try and get like a visa somewhere or because he just recently moved to Italy and how insane that is for someone that had a piece of paper as a passport that yeah. said you, you're basically human, you know, like, and uh, now now he gets the opportunity to to move to Italy and you know the residency and all that stuff. It's uh, it's it's always crazy to to think of the, of the things you have to do to achieve those simple things as as just you know stay with your daughter somewhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've had conversations like this with people. Like uh, the question was, have you do you know what it's like to stand for five hours outside an embassy? And they're like, what? <laughs> Yeah, just to yeah. get a visa, man. It's it's, uh, we've we've had uh, conversations where in the past people would be like, "Oh, just just come to the festival." You know, <laughs> yeah. like, you guys just just show up. It's like, no, we can't. You can't do that. You know, the funny thing is, so technically, I have the EU residency, right? Yeah. And you know how, as Arabs, we always pre-plan because our passport needs time. You need to apply. So. I'm still not used to doing this random, like, oh, let's go to Italy. I can, I can literally get on a (laughs) flight in the next hour and be there. But psychologically, there's always that, you know, I'm still not used to it. My body's telling me you need to wait at least three weeks (laughs) before you travel. You gotta wait, you gotta, you gotta make sure (laughs) it's all right. (laughs) Yeah. So just trying to break out of these, you know, uh, rooted beliefs that we've picked up. Well, not beliefs, but rooted habits based on the reality is interesting. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So spontaneity out the window completely. <laughs> I need to work on that. Um, I want to jump into to the chat real quick, see who we got here. And uh, uh, before we move on to, uh, to a bunch of stuff, Soul, uh, like I said, Max Adam, Mike, Roxanne. Uh, Mike says, I like toast. I do too. <laughs> 
I like those. Um, Muhammad Jamir, why the hell uh, do you look like Gorgon? <laughs> I I don't know how to I don't know how to take that. Yeah. Um, Gorgon's from uh, from Portable Mind, the progressive metal band based here in uh, in the UAE. Um, but um, oh, but we got Baha here. Hi, Baha. What's up, Baha? Thank you for tuning in. Uh, Max. Uh, is tuning in from uh, from Twitch, sending a whole bunch of love. Thank you for tuning in. Um, Michal is in the house. Has such a relaxing voice. Yeah, I know you do have. A, you have. A, you uh, have. Is she not talking about you? No, definitely not me. <laughs> <laughs> no, you do have. Um, you have. Have you ever done voiceover? No, uh, I'm. I, I can sing soothingly but voiceovers because when I sing you notice my, my voice gets a bit softer and then when I when I do voiceovers it just no I, I, let's vote let's take a vote in the chat I, I, no trust oh, me even like voiceovers. setting I'm a bit I'm a bit mon- very awkward in it so it sounds so monotonous like maybe if I practice the, the you know harmonics of it <laughs> I could so you're already it. thinking like a singer I've tried but I've attempted yeah. to do voiceovers right. I just freeze like I become so rigid it's kind of sad look I can't be good at everything okay <laughs> it'll be awesome though um uh Amar, Amar yes, love hi. you Carla what's up Amar love thank you, you for too. tuning in uh Dimitra yes you're amazing Carla love from Cyprus got a Shout beautiful out to voice D I love her voice um where is Carla originally from forgive me if it's common knowledge uh from Mike over on Twitch uh, and don't say earth it's obvious Thank you. No, <laughs> it's uh, and then yeah. wait. He adds heaven. She's an angel. Oh my God! Stop uh, that's it, you from guys. Max. <laughs> yeah. Stop it, you guys. That's so cute. Uh, that too, but no, I'm uh, Syrian Palestinian. But yeah, never been to Palestine and didn't spend much time in Syria. So Earth. <laughs> from, <laughs> it's from kind everywhere. of the third culture kid problem. Like yeah. we're just we're, we we uh, bounced around the Middle East. A I'm couple more of times. Gulf. Like I'm more from the Gulf than anything else. Yeah, I remember like, you yeah. telling me uh, Saudi Arabia as yeah, well. Yeah, like. Yeah, 27 years out of 36 I've spent in the Gulf. So yeah. hopefully German soon, guys. German, German, Deutsch. <laughs> 100%. Um, Lemma's in the house. What's up, Lemma? Uh, Mike's saying, I'm from the great white eagle. <laughs> Who is this? <laughs> Mike is uh, Mike He's Angelo my new from, best friend. from Canada. He always tunes into the uh, show. Yeah, I've seen him as Mike Angelo, not yeah. one, two, three, Cobra <laughs> Blast. Hi, Mike. Uh, Khal Tamimi is in the house. What's up, Khal? Thank you for tuning in. He says, into rooted. Uh, Misho's in the house. Uh, Carla should try ASMR. <laughs> uh, I love it when you're uh, rigid. Oh my God, Khaled. <laughs> <laughs> we should screen. We need a moderator on these comments. Um, uh, she's a phoenix. Uh, I would love to watch a documentary narrated by Carla. Wow. So I think there's a, there's a bunch of voiceover. I think there's uh, a market re- for me. <laughs> requests over in the comments. Hi, guys. Maybe like some hotline. <laughs> Late night hotline. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we already have the red light. Over I know. Here. <laughs> I wanted to say, you know, and then you called this a hole, and it's just going it's, somewhere. It's else. going all over the yeah. place. But um, well, thank you guys for tuning in to everyone tuning in live and, and joining the chat. Uh, Thomas Volkman just uh, like the stream. What's up, man? Thank you for tuning in. And um, but yeah, so let's go back to what uh, you know. You ha- you're going to spend a couple of months here. You moved from Germany. You got all this like rejuvenated energy when it comes to music. The the scene over there is very active. You come back here and you check out the scene again, <laughs> and you're like, "We need to do something." What's left of it, dude? No <laughs> one's here anymore. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, yeah. What's left of it? Yeah, um, and shout out to everyone that um, that went went through the like the rough patch of uh, everything that's happening with the, with the coronavirus and um, and had to leave or had to, uh, you know, uh, find find another way to to get by. Um, but yeah, literally yeah. half the scene had to had to leave. I, not to be a douche, but really, I do believe that hopefully it's for everyone's best. You know, whatever shifts that this chaotic thing created, yeah. hopefully it'll be for the best. You know, sometimes yeah. we don't know what's good for us until it happens and then we, we see down the line. But we're definitely sending you so much love and light. And Sorry, I'm just going to turn off the chat from the screen because it's covering you. There it's we go. Okay. No one needs no to worries. see me. Yeah. Apparently, my voice is is enough today. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but we could see all your all your comments, guys. Um, it, they might not be on screen, but uh, but we have them right here. Yeah, I think. I mean, coming back here this time, I've just had a different mindset. Um, definitely was happy to see the boys uh, in the band. I had a few jam sessions, which were great. Uh, hoping to record some stuff while I'm out here. But 
somehow something felt so different about coming back at this time. And uh, even in Berlin, like I would catch myself thinking, okay, when I go to Dubai, I, I really want to do something for the artists. And literally two weeks into being back, I got an opportunity to do something. Yeah. And then I know we're going to get into it. And then if, like earlier this year, I had a plan and also coming back here, it has kicked off. Mm -hmm. And it's also something we're going to discuss. So just having that to drive community mindset before coming and then showing up and having so many opportunities to do that, it's just felt like my calling this time around. Um, it's interesting. We, we have a couple of gigs. Um, we were asked to do a couple of gigs, but it just hasn't worked out. And we all collectively haven't felt like now's the time for it. Yeah. So everything's falling into place, which I love when that stuff sort of starts, you know, literally tangibly, you know, appearing in front of your eyes. So th this is this is um, interesting because I think, and we're going to dig deep right now. All right. <laughs> um, do you feel part uh, of the scene here? Like when you're, in, when you're in Berlin, do you look back at Dubai and think my, my people, my scene, my band's based over there? Or is this like where I used to be? And I'm still, I'm from Berlin. I'm, I'm a Berlin musician. Me? Yeah. No, I d definitely like, you know, I can't, I can't negate what this place has been for me. Like it's six years of my career and the prime years of it. Uh, no, I think they're very two different things. I'll always feel connected to the scene here. Although it does feel a bit unfamiliar because like I said, a lot of the people are no longer here, but it's been nice to meet the new, the new bands and musicians in town. Yeah. Uh, and in Berlin, I I haven't had the chance yet with COVID and everything to to establish anything yet, like maybe a few friends before coming down. So I, I don't have that loyalty to the scene yet. Um, it, it's been, there's some things that were really shocking. Like I, I went to a couple of open mics there and you, some of them, you don't get a mic, you don't get anything. You just, you know, step up on a step and sing. Whereas here we have the stage, we have the lights, we have the sound engineer, we have all that, you know, so... Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but no, definitely here is my music scene, you know, and, and again, when we talk about this project, I think this will become clear on how much of a community we are here, you know, whether we, we realize that or not, but we are all in the same boat. And I feel like there's so much, uh, eagerness to support each other because what's happening now has been magical magical really let's dig into it let's uh let's are we dig, doing this let's dig into let's it let's do it let's do it there's uh, so yeah you guys haven't announced this yet no so this is gonna be uh we're, we're exclusive on unmuted yeah all right so, exclusively unmuted yeah. <laughs> that's good let's just make sure that microphones are actually unmuted so everyone hears it. <laughs> let's check because so far they're just complimenting my voice and not yours so maybe your mic is off. Uh, let's hope check. let's hope it is <laughs> Um, I'm just going to jump into the comments before we uh, we jump into... Uh, Please, let's not go back to Khaled calling me rigid. Uh, <laughs> global citizens. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're blocking Khaled Tamimi on the comments. 800 Carla. <laughs> uh, uh, I love you, man. Uh, Mike says, it's all good. I'd rather see Carla than the comments. Ooh. Shout out to Mike Angelo from Canada. Mike, we're going to be friends. <laughs> um... I don't know what that word is. Kidnap Carla. Uh, <laughs> Shawa, that's their last name. So it's her and her cousin and they're both good friends of mine. So. Oh, okay. All so right. Shawal's Kidnap Carla. I would love that, guys. <laughs> I love you so much. Uh, Sol uh, says we need a, a kick in the rear end to fix the state of the planet. Nature took matters into its own hands. It's painful, but we got to change things. Amen, So. 100%, 100% agree. Uh, if you uh, if you ever make it to Canada, let me know. I'll buy a few tickets for sure. Awesome. Um, Rani is in the house for, on YouTube. Uh, this is highly entertaining. Thank you very much. Cool. We we do after hours too. <laughs> <laughs> Eight hundred, Carla. Uh, both mics works just fine from Max. Um, you all have pretty voices. <laughs> Thank, thank you for, uh, it's like, come along afterthought. Yeah, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> uh, don't touch anything oh from God. Bogdan. <laughs> oh my God, Bogdan. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you for tuning in. And we won't, we won't touch anything. Adnan has the voice uh, of a fisted. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Innocent me for a split second. I was like an angel, like creating a fist. And like, oh shit. No. <laughs> oh yeah. shit. Thanks, Hatemi. But yeah, um, so, um, so you, you, you got some big news. You got some, um, 
some plans for for the scene here in general. Yeah, hey, we can start with a smaller one. All right, which is also very relevant. Mm -hmm. um, so as I said, coming back like two weeks into it, I came across a place called Cave in Al Sarkal. Yeah, and had a conversation with Rania, who's one of the owners, and she mentioned that she was doing uh, music. And actually when I met her, Noosh, like Sploosh, were, were playing for Lebanon. And it was right when the Lebanon catastrophe happened, sadly. Yeah. And I went down and then I had a chat with yeah. Rania and we sort of, I don't know how this conversation magically flowed into, oh, I'd like to have music here every week. And I was like, you know, I can, I can do that for you. And they're very easygoing, her and her sister. They're like, all right, let's give it a shot. And so over, I think t almost two months ago, I started hosting the Saturday jams, open jams, yeah. at Cave when there was nothing else happening. And immediately, like I think the first one time was for Lebanon and we raised, um, I think it was 6,000 dirhams at the time, wow. which was brilliant. Yeah, um, 6,000. And then it's just been an ongoing thing since then. And we, we keep having the same people come back. We keep having new faces, people who have never taken to the stage. You know, and just getting the thank yous after, you know, from, from newbies, you know, oh, thank you for giving us this opportunity. It has been so beautiful. We started off on an open jam stage. Yeah. Like that was our first step towards where we are now. So to be able to give that back and see people grow every week has been magical. Uh, and that's something we're, we're constantly doing and I will keep doing till I leave. So every Saturday, one to four, come down guys. Like if you want to sing, support, it's just been it's been lovely. So I think I think open uh, jams and open mics are one of the most important things in the scene in general because that's kind of where the the like uh, up and comers and the the noobs and the people that just want to try it for the first time outside of their bedroom go, but also where the seasoned musicians hang out and jump yeah. on the mic for a bit and stuff. Exactly. But it's even more important that uh, that you you've started it during this time because. There was, there was a thirst for it. There's yeah. nothing else going exactly. on. Exactly. Exactly. And I think I think people were were looking for like where do I put all this energy? Where do I perform? Where do I 100%. do this stuff? Um, were there any uh, like uh, obstacles of trying to put on a show during this time outside of the venue? Like you and the venue had a had an understanding, but uh, anything? Um, Genuinely not. And it's 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 been free flow. I'm telling you. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. It's it's been it's been great and under control and, and good and full and and it's a dog friendly place so you'll always have these like cute dogs around it's just <laughs> it's awesome. it, I don't, like come down because it's such a community vibe you yeah. know and you literally step in and you feel like you're outside of dubai you know and it's just the energy in that place is great um and like i'm not pimping out there's just genuinely become a hangout for everyone who set foot in there you know and during the week and everything so it's become this community space where mm. the same people are almost always there so you walk in you're like hi hello marhaba you know like it's just it's just, it's a great place and they're doing a great thing by by wanting to have music there and they get nothing out of it literally like so it's 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 good and uh so so when was the first one how long has it been it's been around two months so I came uh, towards I came July 21st I think so we must have started Let's assume August. So it's been, I think, a couple of months. I, I, I mean, I've, I can't count how much, how much time has passed. It's just been my highlight of the week, you know. Yeah. Literally, like how, I look how, forward to. How do you find the the musicians? How how do you? But before that, when I was here the last time, there was a few other open mics happening, like uh, Jazz at Pizza Express, and then there was an event at Melas in five. They had like an open jam session, so I had connected with the new artists. And then what I did also back then was a, a offstage workshop. We called it offstage. And I got a friend of mine who's a healer and we brought around 25 artists and we just spoke about uh, expression on stage and overcoming fears and about mistakes and that it's okay. And we had a beautiful like two hour session just to also to give back to the community. So I sort of was in contact with the newbies from then uh, and so coming back here was just a matter of posting it and then literally hitting up all these people who i knew you know were fresh to the scene and want want to grow and want to evolve and want to yeah. move forward and and you know the almost all of them showed up which is beautiful i want to talk about the healer what is what did you guys do 
So last time we spoke, I told you I st- had started therapy. Yeah, I'm still doing that. Every, yeah, like, me too. Yeah, it's, I'm a I'm a convert. I'm I'm, yeah, I'm still going strong. Yeah, I mean I mean I, I like that word convert because I I too was skeptical in the beginning, and I've been doing that, and then also, literally, my close friends, almost all of them are healers, mm-hmm. which has been so amazing for me like along my journey. But now it just feels like. I'm just there. Like it's time for me to address even more things. And I actually did an inner child healing mm-hmm. a couple of weeks ago. And so man, what, it's not like a therapist. It's not a. It's not like a therapist. No, okay. it's a different approach. All right. It's a different. Like my therapist for me personally, and I'm sure everyone has a different experience. My therapist takes everything I say and makes sense of it, mm-hmm. and gives me perspective, which yeah. is something I'm now learning I lack to a mm-hmm. certain extent. So that that's what my therapist does. And then inner child healing, the session I did was to literally go back to moments in my childhood where I've picked up things that are now harming me in my day-to-day life. Be it a traumatic experience that created lack of self-worth or be it another experience that, you know, stopped me from trusting. And and we, we carry these traumas with us. Yeah. You know, year on, year on to now. And I had one epiphany, like not even if it, like I had to, I had one scenario where I had carried the memory for well, all my life, 36 years, let's say from when it happened, 33 years. Yeah. I had car- carried a memory and was holding so much resentment because of it towards certain people in my life. And it turned out I confronted my family members and it turned out I had a memory that wasn't even true. As a child, we create memories based on oh. the trauma. So imagine correcting this one scenario that I've been suffering because of all that. Like, you know, like it's crazy. And is it? it's not like hypnosis or anything, but it, no. it is digging super deep into your mental. It's digging super deep. It's going back to when you were young. It's basically a lot of things that are coming in my way now has been about you know, when we're brought up, we're, we're brought up as a clean slate, man. Yeah. You know, and then everything sort of just like cake, right? Icing, toppings, you know, beliefs, values, realities, religion, uh, gender. You're supposed to wear pink. You're supposed to, we, we, we're literally programmed. Yeah. And the kind of healing I've been doing now or trying to do is to go back and destroy and uncreate so many things I've picked up, you know, that don't sit well with me, but I just do them because... That's what I was because taught because that's, that's what, what I was yeah. programmed to do. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Like there's so many times I've done things and it just didn't feel right, but yeah. I did it. But that must have been a habit that I picked up from my mom, for example. Like like even helping someone. Like sometimes I help someone, but inside I'm like, oh, shumali yeah. khila. And you got to trust that. Like that's the you. Yeah, yeah. The other one is the... The, the socially acceptable. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah. That's so, crazy. That's good. Any healers in the house, uh, let us know. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm curious. You sound I'm, like you're offering your services. I'm not gonna lie. It was like any healers in the house. <laughs> I'm curious. I'm, I'm, I was trying to lure them in. I'm not. I'm not that bad. I'm only a little bad. If you, if, if I close my eyes and dig deep, there will be some. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like Joey, man. I'm gonna see like the dirt and everything. But you were talking about. You mean if you dig deep into your childhood or? Yeah, I, th- I think like there. I, I have so much. So like a bunch of residual memories and, and uh, traumas and stuff that uh, because I was raised as a, a Middle Eastern male, you're just supposed to brush it off. And now that I'm looking back and like going through therapy and doing all that shit, I'm like, God damn, that, that did suck. You know? Yeah, <laughs> man, of course. I'm, I'm now starting to like uh, process emotion and, and stuff for things that happened yeah. over the last 30 and it's years. And it's not you, it's all of us. From, from the age of like, from when we were born till we we're seven, like that's a critical age for us. And we... We develop so many of these like traumas, beliefs, value. like it's, it's crazy how much we absorb. And it just, if we don't, if you don't stop at some point and say, whoa, I need to go and fix that, you know, come 30 years later and it'll start coming up. Like yeah. it, it came up a lot. A lot of my issues came up in my relationship and literally now I'm just in this state where I'm like learning so much about who I am and what I've been doing. And I'm like, oh. I can't believe I didn't see any of that, you know? It's, it's yeah. just been so eye-opening. We think we know ourselves, right? And then we, we're shocked when a lot of people like are reacting towards us the same way and we're the common denominator, but we're still like, no, you know, I'm not doing anything it's wrong. It's not my fault. Yeah, it's not my <laughs> fault. It's all 25 of you. Yeah. 
But you know, now it's about, no, like, hold up. <laughs> There's a pattern. I need to dig deep. And honestly, the stuff that's coming out is intense. It's heavy. But I know once I break out of it, it's just going to be easier for me. Yeah. It hasn't been. It will be. And I'm just there. I'm just there. So that's, I'm doing therapy. I'm doing healing. And I'm open to whatever will get me there. Like, why not? How has that changed your uh, your output, your music? A lot. Music? A, a lot. I'm telling you, like, what's been happening now has been proof. Yeah. Literally proof of how things are unfolding, you know, and how my little changes are opening up these opportunities. Do you remember uh, that book, The Secret? Yeah, I haven't read it. but I haven't read it either. I just know the concept. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah. you put a $100 bill on your wall, add some zeros to, into it and like you <laughs> manifest, it. manifest yeah, yeah. the, uh, do you believe in that? Like you're manifesting good energy, you're manifesting Saturday jams at the cave. You, uh, I, I'm glad you asked that. Um, I was telling, remember I told you in Berlin, I was saying when I come down to Dubai, I would like to do that. Yeah. I literally remember where I was sitting when I said, when I go to Dubai, I want to host open jams. Yeah. And in my head at the time, I was thinking uh, Jazz at Pizza Express. Because uh, bless Louise, we used to manage it and she left. And then literally two weeks after I got here, it happened. I do believe that. I don't, I don't know about the $100 bills, but I do believe what you put out there truly wholeheartedly, you know, is bound to, to come your way. Yeah. And I'm reading this book and it's excellent. And it literally says, demand what you want from the universe and then shut the fuck up. Literally. Let it do its work. You just do you. So being the skeptical person I was and where I am today, again, I'm seeing things with my own eyes and that's how I function. So as long as I'm seeing things unfold, I'm going to believe in this. Yeah. Like my, I feel shift. I actually ran into a friend I haven't seen in years and she said, you look different. What have you done? I've done nothing. And I knew it was the energy she was feeling. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? So it's just beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. I, I love that stuff. I'm a, I'm a total hippie when it comes to that stuff. We need to talk offline and I need to get you some childhood trauma healing, man. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. it's, it's amazing. Yeah, we. Uh, I, I need uh, I need me a healer, but... Um, I need a healer. <laughs> was it hero or healer? Yeah, I think it was like, hero. <laughs> <laughs> but hero, healer works too. Um, I think uh, I think one of the craziest things is uh, th like the, the idea of manifest manifesting something. It's because... Whether you believe in it or, or not, the moment you commit to this thing happening, you will start subconsciously doing things to make it work. Yeah. Like you'll start learning the craft more because you know that you're eventually going to get. So you manifest it anyway because, like, you're working towards it. It's not. It's not as, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 sci-fi. It, it can as, be though. I'm telling you, like, this is something I didn't really work towards. I just happened to be in the right place at the right. But time. I, I like you might have put out. The energy, or you might have been looking, just hitting. Oh, you go to a. It a was cool, in the back of my hand, basically. A cool, yeah, yeah. A cool new place. Be like, could could we do a, a spot here? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It just it just all works out. Yeah, but yeah. um, but That's yeah, I'm, the 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 chat's going off with this. I'm uh, we're gonna we're gonna jump into the chat real quick, guys. Uh, where were we? Um. Uh, I think up. Oh yeah, fisted angel. That's yeah. where. We were. <laughs> That's where we. <laughs> Um, you guys are awesome uh, and loving Unmuted. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, Max, Cave People, um, Ross is in the house. Ross. Uh, Shan Carla, shout out to Ross. Oh, big time. And Ross is the guitarist on all my tracks in the first album. So we have like, a, we have babies together. You know? We have songs <laughs> together. Shout out to Ross. Uh, Misha's in the house. He says there's an uh, expectation in Europe when you come from a Middle Eastern country to have an Oriental flavor. Uh, did you find this is a pressure on such artists, uh, artists to a change what to change a bit of their music? I then to reflect that. Okay, I, I get that's what you That's saying. a very good question. Do you want to answer it later? Um, yeah, we'll get we'll get back to this. Yeah, we'll yeah, run through uh, some some of the comments and get back to that. Um, that is Puppet friendly. Right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Ali's in the house. So lovely to see you, Carla. Lots of love. What's up, Ali? Uh, I need a healer. There we go. I <laughs> uh, just love this. Um, not a healer, but uh, happy to listen, talk to anyone who needs it from Khaled Tamimi. Shout out to Khaled. Uh, one, of, uh, one of the true um, brethren of, uh, of the tribe uh, has been there for, for a whole lot of people. Um, Carla hits me harder than uh, how Haifa did. She's the full deal good time. <laughs> Mike Angelo's got like an unmuted uh, top 10 <laughs> I'm list. I'm so happy with it. I need you to join every call, man. <laughs> we need to talk. Um, uh, hello, lovelies. Gorgon's in the house. What's up, Gorgon? Thank you for tuning in. 
uh, amen, y'all. Uh, I guess a right, uh, our, it's a rite of passage. We'll all have our demons and skeletons in the closet. Can totally relate, and therapy really does help. Can't recommend it enough from soul. Uh, manifest destiny uh, is uh, definitely a good thing. In this particular case from Mike, uh, yes, commitment is the key to achieving. Being on the fence about decisions leaves you standing still from Ross. Beautiful. Um, uh, Michal is asking you what inspires you. And uh, Misha is saying, I don't believe in manifesting something, but I believe in being ready and open for when an opportunity comes. Yeah, I think that's that's kind of what I was trying to say is that uh, I do believe in the, the term manifesting is like something that I that I agree with. But I think it's based on just being open and ready uh, for it. But that's how you yeah. manifest it. I, I, b- I believe in both, but yeah. I definitely like the being ready and open. There's a book called Outliers, um, and it just shows you like the people who succeed are the people who whose eyes are open to opportunities and they actually go for it. Yeah. So that's a great point. 100%. But um, let's go back to uh, Tamisha's question. There was a really good question about, did you experience any pressure on... Um, Artists to change their to, identity. To be more I- oriental, oriental in, in the foreign country because yeah. you're expected to sound like that as a, as a Middle Eastern person. Um, I mean, to be fair, uh, I have only been there for a while and then COVID hit, so I haven't had the chance to truly perform. But I did meet uh, a guy from a band called Sham Trio, and they're a Syrian band there, and they're also friends with Shkun. And a lot of the bands, the Syrian and Arab bands are in Berlin. Um, and ironically, the ones there do have that oriental vibe and Arab lyrics in their songs. Um, and they seem to be doing really well. So I haven't been put in this situation. I do, I, I think I personally would want to. I mean, already my music sort of, I try to incorporate the Western and oriental. And it does help me stay close to my roots. Um, so I wouldn't say it's pressure. And I don't think I'd ever feel pressured. Like I'm going to stick to what I love doing and, and you know, the message I want to convey but I feel like in Berlin specifically, if I do that, it would be greatly appreciated, you mm-hmm. know, because they have so much happening there. So it still has that unique element to it. Yeah, hundred um, percent. But yeah, so I'll, I'll let you know if I if I experience that for sure. But it's too too soon to tell. And there was one more uh, question: What inspires you from Michal? Um, what inspires me? You usually. Usually what gets my, my juices flowing is things that move me emotionally. Um, and usually the, the, like the, the not so good things. Oh, the camera's off. Oh, oh, no. Okay. Oh, here we go. Yeah. So I don't want to just write when I'm down, you know? So a couple of songs I wrote were just from a chilled, happy place where I'm just imagining different scenarios. Uh, but it could be anything. Literally I've, I wrote a whole song, do my part just because I heard at the time, Wadia play one chord, literally one chord that hit a nerve and I wrote a whole song around it. And then the same thing happened with Studio Sin, my latest release. It was just F major seven. And I was like, what is that chord? I mean, I compose with, with guitars, but I'm not, I haven't learned guitar, so I don't know mm-hmm. what so things you just, are. So you just heard the chord. So I heard the chord, I'm like, what is that? She's like, F major seven. And I literally just wrote Studio Sin based on that. So it could be anything, experiences, uh, a lyric, uh, a way something is sung, a, a, a chord. Like we were saying earlier, you go to Lebanon and things. Yeah, but it's, I think it's not that. I think it's not that I'm going there. I think it's that I'm breaking out of Dubai's fast-paced, mm. blah state. You know what I mean? Like, it, is, it is very fast-paced here. A lot of yeah. people don't, don't get that, but it is a very busy, fast-paced... It's survival like, mode. Wow. Yeah, it's a, it's, yeah. It, it's the the Dubai that's in the in the like advertisements for everyone else that's outside of the country. That's like you're on the beach all the time. Yeah, no, no, no. We're, we're not I, I can count the number of times I've been on the beach in thirteen years. <laughs> yeah. years. I mean, my, the, my my color says the same. <laughs> yeah. But no, no. But that's the thing. It's breaking out the routine and being somewhere where it's you know more chilled, more laid back, and there is nature around you, and there's zamamir, and there's you know. Yeah. So, so it's more that to be honest. Yeah, hundred um, percent. But yeah. I hope uh, that answers it. Uh, so sure. I, I want to, uh, Dunya's in the house. What is up? Adnan, AD. can you take off your hat for a second? No, I cannot. <laughs> uh, for those that are listening to only the audio. Trust uh, me. <laughs> I, I, I'm growing my hair. Uh, so it's a bit of a mess. Um, I said this on, uh, on one of the after hours, but uh, Tara, my wife said, uh, you look like a caveman who also happens to be homeless. And I thought that was, uh, that was a very very thorough description. (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm going to stay quiet. <laughs> it really is true. I mean, you, you looked at me when you walked in, you were like, oh, hey. Oh, hey, yeah. <laughs> Wrong house. Yeah. <laughs> no. uh, is in the house. What is up, Rudy? Adnan, don't even think that I will forget about your tattoos. Uh, I am going what's, to hunt you down like a dog. What's going on there? They want me to take my shirt off and show my tattoos, but I don't. I I uh, don't want to get flagged for uh, un- <laughs> unfortunate. I'm gonna save you <laughs> from this one. Okay, seeing how I'm here, I don't want him to do that. <laughs> Wait, why is this camera doing that? All right, we're just. I don't know, but this takes me back like 20 years. This like yeah, the 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 colored uh, yeah. screen. The, yeah, we're. Uh, well, we're just sticking to it. We're, we're, there's a lot of technical things going on today, so it's just it, this is just the way it's going to be. I, I must um, commend you on the setup. Like you've always had such you. a great setup, the theme song, the intro. The, it's just been very perfectly calculated. So you got to take some credit for that, man. Thank you. I'm, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to make it more like um, what's the word modular? So like oh, if, I was going for strip strip bar because of the red light, but yeah, okay, but yeah modular yeah, works too. Yeah, I, I we can change it to blue. I don't know. <laughs> Um, but uh, but I, I wanted I wanted to find a way where everything can be set up and we could like literally just flick a switch at one point like all the cameras would be on tripods that would just sit in place yeah flip a switch and then sit around and do a podcast so it wouldn't be like trying to take away from the conversation manifest so. it and exactly. it will happen <laughs> manifesting it also also I'm I'm delegating that's another word oh, I'm yeah. doing. I just I just call other people be like hey you're better audio come over. And, uh, Community that, support, yeah. man. That's exactly. how it should be. So back to uh, back to the Saturdays. Does it have a? Are you calling it something? Is it is it Saturday jams? Is it? It's funny cave? because we, we can't agree if it's just jam sessions or open jam sessions. So I'm just calling it jam sessions now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I had jam sessions. Yeah. And and uh, where where can people get more information? Just for everyone that's uh, tuning in from from the UAE. Um, I mean, we don't have a page for it, but. Um, I promote it on Asper Casper, Cave promote it as well. And then after every Saturday, you'll... Cave with a K for everyone Cave with a K, yeah, uh, also. It's at Cave People. Um, So yeah, so it's just us and then the artists every Saturday promoting it. But uh, I'm going to say it here. Cave, Sirkal, 124, spread the word. Uh, Come down, it's really cool. And come down early because we are being cautious. We are, you know, putting social distancing measures in place. Yeah. We don't want anyone to get hurt. So come early because it's limited capacity um and we get full alhamdulillah every time so that's super super cool yeah yeah um what happens when you go i've already fi- found someone to hand it down to but we still haven't discussed what's gonna happen once i leave okay uh, <laughs> end of november yeah so we'll see because because other than this you're also working on another big project oh yes what the hell was that i'm okay I don't even know what that was. It was the Sengali sign. Oh, shit. Uh, that Ahmed Munir made that for me. He's the guy who's probably going to manage. <laughs> oh, yeah? Ahmed Munir. Uh, this sorry. could have killed me. Oh, this is quite cool. <laughs> this almost stabbed uh, Carla in, in the head. And for those that are listening to only the audio, <laughs> nothing happened I'm again. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> uh, even if it landed on my head, I'm Syrian. My, head, my head's pretty, uh, pretty hardcore. Um, but I was... Uh, Oh no, and uh, a cat doing stuff. Oh no, no, no. There's no cats. They're they're all outside. But uh, <laughs> sorry, we're just jumping into the chat. Um, yeah, another another big project. While you're here, so like <sighs> three months of of something that was a necessity. You had to come back. There was uh, relationship stuff happening. And you like fully booked yourself into doing these projects. And my grandma died a day before I came. So I just, oh my God, I'm sorry. It was such a rough week that there was nowhere to go but up, man. So, yeah. And that's what happened. Do you, do you think that's like the the drive comes from, from the rough patches? For me personally, I, I, I take shitty situations and I use them to fuel me. Uh, it's tricky because sometimes if you get wrapped up in things, you're escaping issues rather than dealing with them. Yeah. So it's trying to find that thin line where, okay, I'm digesting what hap- what's happening and also trying to do stuff. I'm, I'm still figuring it out. Yeah. But, yeah. That, I mean, just, just from what you told me. I know, but like it, was, it was festive, I'm telling you. Yeah. Um, but here I am and, 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 you know, things are great, alhamdulillah, work-wise. So can't and, complain. And uh, the, the big project that you guys are working on. Yes, so this is the first time we disclose this information. And the reason we are disclosing it now is because 
Uh, we have received the permit for the event. We, I believe, might have started selling tickets tonight, and if not, oh. by tomorrow on Platinum List. And I'm happy to start talking about it if you are. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, ju just to preface this, uh, getting a permit in uh, in the UAE for, for any sort of... Uh, music related. Any, music yeah. related, anything is... Is the green light? This is it. This is it happening because the biggest problem is getting the permit in the yeah. first place. Oh, they didn't make it easy, but they did make it happen. Yeah, and they're doing a lot of things like waiving certain fees to support, which is beautiful. That's amazing. Um, another one of the things that just flowed magically. But yeah. yeah, let's do it. Let's let's talk about it. So what is it? Okay, guys. So do you want the Disney fairy tale movie or the happy ending one? Like the quick, uh, yalla, trach, trach, happy ending. Don't La, say happy it. ending. You know who's in yeah, my chat. Yeah, but that's chat. why I'm saying it. <laughs> Khaled. <laughs> no, no, but... Let's, let's, let's dig deep. Let's talk about it. Yeah. I want to know the, the story behind it. I'd love to because a part of digging deep and talking about it in detail is for you to understand how much community support and love there is here in the UAE that even I wasn't aware of. It seemed like this whole time here I was building towards this moment. You mm -hmm. know, I've always been active in the scene and supportive and to see that you know come back tenfold and with so much love and genuinity it's beautiful so um a year ago i went to bogdan who's on the call and he's a live web broadcast guru like very high quality stuff and i i went to him for an, with an idea and we had spoken to it about it throughout the months and then when i got back we sat down and made it happen and we are bringing you uh, live interactive uh, audience talk show called At Fannan. So uh, that's taking place at Sima, which is a beautiful dance studio in Al Sirkal. Um, and basically, the aim of this show is to highlight who the artists are, mm -hmm. like who the people behind the music are, rather than just talk about their music and their and what inspires them and all that. But it's really to get up close and personal with the artists on a human level. Yeah. Because sometimes okay, you, you'll hear a band's music and you like it, right? But then you don't know who these people are, you know? Um, and sometimes you don't like the music, but you know someone is genuinely good and, and I don't know, supports a humanitarian cause. And then that's another way to, that's another way to like... Enjoy, yeah. You know, appreciate always, their music, you know? I always you know? find that, yeah. You know, yeah, like I know a lot of people, like I've been told by people directly that... You know, their music, my music is not necessarily something they would enjoy, but the fact that they've had discussions with me and have gotten to know me on a personal level just they made them, that they see differently. They see a characteristic in the music. A hundred percent. Like they have a different appreciation of your work, yeah. not just what you're singing, but also the work that's put behind it, what you believe in. And, and I felt that there was a slight gap uh, to be honest, we came up with the idea and then you started unmuted and I fell in love with it because you were literally sitting with the artists outside of their role as musicians and talking to them. Like when you asked me if we could talk about therapy, remember? I was yeah. like, yes. Yeah. Because people need to know the music behind, the people behind the music. Um, and we did want to do it in the most professional way and in the most fun way and like cover all angles. So... We're going to be having a segment that's up close and personal with the bands. And then we're going to have another segment that's music related, but not your average music questions. Um, and all this is going to be going live, uh, streamed online for free. But we're also going to have a live studio audience and that's going to be ticketed. And then um, at the end of the, of the show, the live stream will go off and the ticket holders get to experience a full exclusive concert with the band. And these bands are like itching to play, you know, and we are bringing the best of the best to the stage. Literally the best of the best in terms yeah. of setup, instruments and whatever you can think of. Uh, another thing that's been beautiful is every person we've approached with this, with this idea has just jumped on board. Yeah. Like just like that. You I, know? Think, I think that's what, that's what I'm getting. Every, every, um, everything you're saying sounds like something that every artist or musician or uh, even just enthusiast would want in, in the scene. Like, wh why wouldn't I want someone to put on a show where I could watch a local band that I support 
get to know them better, get to see interaction stuff, like uh, be part of the show, be part of that. I think that's um, that's that's where the the magic is. It is, it is. There, there's so many elements, and and I'm an artist, and I know what it's like to be an artist here, and I'm literally trying to bring these artists something that's that's much needed. You know, this is a project literally by creators for these artists, and I'll tell you more about it because. There's nothing that we don't want to do for them, you know? Like, we, this has the bands at the heart of it, yeah. literally. What's best for them is at the core, and then everything else is sort of falling into place um, with it. Uh, so just to tell you a bit more about how it happened, uh, came up with the idea, uh, knew, I, knew I wanted Sima in place from the start, the venue in yeah. Al Sirkal, because it's stunning. Uh, talked to them. They were on board. Uh, I had I have a colleague who I used to work with at uh, JK58, um, who's now in Platinum List, and I, I had a chat with him, and he fully loved the idea, and he was on board. And then their ticketing team were on board, and they're coming on board as partners, you know, not even as like ticketeers, no, yeah. you know, not even as a venue, no, literally like. You want the space? Take it. You want our support? Take they're, it. They're they're investing with you. In yeah, the, in literally. So we're we're pulling all these people who just want to be a part of something bigger and something that serves the community. And then Cave comes in, and I'm like, "Do you guys want to do F and B?" And they're like, "Yeah." And then I call Walid Shah. I'm gonna name everyone because these people have been amazing. And I called Walid Shah, and I called Unmuted, and we called a couple of people. And literally, the question was, "We're doing this. How can you generate value for yourself?" You know, out of this, and also add value to us, and that's been the, also the center of our conversations. Um, and we do have Unmuted on board, and we do have Walid Shah there. And unfortunately for you guys, I will be. Involved. He will be there. He will be. He will be involved. Um, we have Sure on board as the official audio partner. I'm gonna name everyone because they've been so amazing. We have Al Melas giving us the best of the best equipment. Uh, I got a call two days ago from. All Saints, the clothes brand, which is my favorite brand, saying, we love it. We're going to dress every band member. Nice. And they get to take the clothes. Um, Except for Gorgon. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not going to say anything because I love him and I need him to be there. <laughs> but yeah, it's Kakil Manara. My friend owns this restaurant. I called him up. I didn't know he had like an association with the Arab alternative music as Kakil Manara. It turns out he did. Wow. Uh, and he's jumped on board as well with giveaways. Uh, Grind Room Studio, JM, yeah. has offered some mixing and mastering sessions. And a couple of my friends, Evoke and Maya, are offering healing sessions. Like we have so many giveaways because so many people want to be a part of this and yeah. want to add value to this amazing event. And we have all the bands locked in and we can share the lineup too if you want. Oh, we can? Oh, yeah. That's cool. I'm going to, let's jump into the chat before we do because I think I think this is one of the coolest. Sorry, um, I'm excited. If I was talking too fast, like this has been something that's on the table for a year and so much love and work has gone into it. So it's like a... It's a it's a happy ending. Uh, I told you. You want the happy ending or you want the the four? Um, I dig deep and end it with a happy ending. There you go. Me, obviously, I gave you that. Um, that's such an amazing idea. Yes. Um, where are we at? Max is saying, "I'm in." Where can I buy my ticket? Platinum list, guys. Platinum list. Platinum list. So it, it, we don't know if it's out right now or will be out tomorrow. It should be by tomorrow uh, morning. But, but I'll link it on the uh, on the Facebook page and uh, I'll post it on on Instagram and all that stuff as well. Amazing for, for uh, everyone and, else to and check it out. And we we've started a page at the at sign Fanan F A N A N live. Uh, so it's a new page. It's also going out tomorrow. So definitely, please, guys, follow it, and you're gonna have access to all the information there at Fanan Live. Uh, anyone in the chat? Can you um, can you just type it out uh, so everyone gets to see it at the the sign at Fanan Live? Bogdan, if you're on, I mean, dude, he's my he's my co-producer. He's my partner in this project. So. Type it, man. Drop drop a link. There we go. Oh, beautiful. Max Thank you shouting. so much. Thank you. That's um, exactly what it is. Uh, Misha was asking, uh, as you're doing a lot of self-reflection lately, I'm sure you're touching on uh, the artist ego in all of us. How do you find the balance between maintaining a drive to be the best and not 
uh, taking yourself too seriously. God Ooh, damn. We're like, going to come to an end. Yeah, don't, we're, don't, where's my bubble? I'm just, I'm just getting started. Yeah. That's uh, on a sort of personal level. Every musician has a backstory that motivates him slash her uh, to compose and write their music uh, to share it with the world. 100%. Wish you all the best from Fadi Shami. Shout out to Fadi. Thanks, my love. Shout out to you in Italy, Habibi. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. There's ciao, um, ciao. a bunch of uh, at Fan and Live in, in the comments. Sounds dope. Going to be streamed, right, from Seoul? Uh, yes, it is, right? There's yeah, so it's going to be it's going to be cross posted on the pages of everyone involved. In case you didn't know, yeah. uh, literally all the partners uh, that I mentioned uh, hopefully will be cross posting it, and uh, then you can always get a ticket and come down if you're in town. And there's, as I said, a lot of fun things that are going to take place. Uh, on site, uh, you know, that won't be online, but it's, it's uh, whatever you want it to be. We, we just want you to tune in and we want you to get to know the artists more. I know all the musicians uh, personally and they're incredible souls and funny as hell. And we've been doing some cool shoots with them behind the scenes with Shore and we've been having so many laughs. So uh, there's a lot in store to see. So is it, is, it's going to be um, seasonal, right? Yeah, so we have season one, which is four episodes starting October 30. And then it's every Friday, November 6, 13, 20. And uh, we're going to do that, see how it goes, and then aim for our next one in April. Mm -hmm. But um, the reason we have that set, but we don't know who the bands are going to be because everything is so volatile now. And I don't even know who's still going to be in town by yeah. then. Um, but that's the aim, yeah. The aim is to do this and uh, and then keep doing it, hopefully, and maybe take it globally. Let's see. But definitely, it has to start here because the bands here need people need to know who they are. And I think it's uh, it's going to be um, accessible from from like everywhere, right? Pretty it's not much. it's not uh, geo fenced or any of that stuff. No, no. It's on Platinum List. It's on Asper Casper. It's on At Fun and Live. It's on Bogdan's page. Native. Um, it's literally. Everywhere, the bands. So you can't miss it. There's no escape, guys. There's no <laughs> excuse for not catching it. Um, who came up with the name? Um, so remember the workshop I told you that I did for artists uh, before I traveled, the yeah. offstage one, to sort of deal with the few things that you might feel on stage. And when we were brainstorming, a friend of mine had suggested at Fannan, which means to get artsy um, for that. And I fell in love with it. I said, you know what? I'm just going to leave that for my other project potentially and yeah. let's come up with something else and it hasn't left me i absolutely love it um so once this project kicked off i'm like that's it that's what it's gonna be because for for all the non uh, arab speakers tuning in uh at fennan as a word is to get artsy like you yeah, said to get creative but then there's the at yeah. in english the sign and then fennan yeah and uh, it just it, it almost like works out Perfectly. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, so was the, that was the plan. Yeah. Yeah. I, as soon as I saw that, I was like, "Damn!" I, on that note, I want to shout out one more to a friend of mine called Dina, who did also is is literally just taking on passion projects like everyone else, and she created a brand identity for us. Mm -hmm. So keep a lookout for the logo when you see all our artwork. Everything on that page is something she designed, and she's so good to dedicate that time and that like creativity and zo. For something, you know, just from a place of passion. Yeah. I, I can't thank her enough, really. Uh, it's always amazing to me when, when people come together to create uh, a goal. I always use, because my reference to that uh, was uh, was when we first started doing the Svengali stuff. It was like from the recording to the artwork to the, the, the microphones, the guitars I borrowed, like everything was someone chipped in exactly. somewhere to try and make this project work. And there's something as simple as like a four, it wasn't was four, it was six. I, I know my albums, a six track EP. There were like 20 people involved. But that, that's the beauty of my, my launch, my launch alone, my album not had 14 people. Yeah. And, and just wanting to be there willingly you know, without asking for anything in, in return, just to support. And that's what I'm telling you. It's hard to find a community like this because it's magical. Yeah. It's magical. And like you said, I've never felt stuck and I've never made anyone feel stuck. And it's just, it's nice. And I'm, I'm seeing it now magnified through this project. Like there was no one who wasn't keen to support, you know, with the end goal being give bands the recognition and the space and the attention. And it's just amazing. So um, 
who's who's uh, who are the the acts? Yeah, the acts of season one. All right, uh, drum roll, please. <laughs> Tamimi, I did that better than you. Um, so October thirty, we have noon. Noon. Noon is a um, Eastern Western Oriental fusion band. Uh, beautiful sound, instrumental, and sometimes with some singing. Um, bass, oud, and drums. Oh, my favorite. Um, so yeah, noon are amazing. And then um, November 6th, we have YY. I love that band. Who are a dream pop, like ethereal wave uh, duo. They're actually married with three kids and it's beautiful. I don't know how they find time to I know. create I, music. Why, why, if you guys uh, ever listen to this, come on the show. Yeah, Stop. no, I'll, we'll get them on the show Kieran, yeah. for sure. Yeah, no, no, they have to. They, uh, the, I, I asked them, but then they had another kid. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the, I mean, we'll, we'll talk, we'll talk more to them on our episode, like more about them. There's some little cute stories when it comes to their kids as well. So we have Why Why. So that's a different genre that we're uh, introducing, and and like these are bands that need to go places. And when you hear them, you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. And then we have uh, November 13, Noosh Likes Plush. Yep. You know Noosh? I'm a big fan of Noosh Likes And Plush. Noosh has the coolest, craftiest music I've ever heard. So unique. Um, she's a singer. She's a artist. She directs. She produces. She does yeah. everything. And um, check her music videos out. They're so trippy. Um, I remember the first one I saw for, uh, for Noosh Likes Plush was... Uh, a stop motion music yeah, video yeah, yeah. where she like painted yes. on herself Correct. at the same time. And it's all like, visually uh, moving and yeah, it's, yeah. it's like, God, yeah. that must have taken forever. Yeah, it's it's brilliant. I was watching it uh, the other day. It's, you could see the work that's gone into it, but the yeah. creativity is is ridiculous. And Anoush was uh, one of the mentors at the Rock Camp for Girls, mm -hmm. the initiative that we had. So we go way back and we've always been active members in the community. Yeah. So it's, and, and X as well, Christian from YY too. Um, so it's really nice to have them on board. And then last but not least, uh, November 20, we have Portable Mind. Uh, with <laughs> Gorgon, Ziad, Vin, Viv. So I'm really excited. Gorgon plays keys with us as well. Bless him. And yeah, and, and inshallah, next season we're going to get Svengali on, but I don't know where your band members are. Well, yeah, I have to, I have <laughs> Maybe to find we'll do it in first. Germany when Josh is there and then we'll yeah. get you guys. But that's the plan, right? Yeah. Wherever we do it from, we want to keep sort of promoting the, the homegrown heroes and just become a platform for them to to go somewhere. I mean, the aim of this also is to literally have 30 minutes plus of recorded concert footage, yeah. including the audio stems, to give to every band to use. We Content is so hard, good content is so hard to get a hold of and so expensive to create here. That's, I think, the, the, a multi-cam... Uh, live performance with the audio recorded professionally is uh, not affordable for any. That's exactly band what we're doing. Yeah. We have eight cameras. Like that's exactly yeah. what we're doing. Um, plus whatever else we can give the the clothes, the the, the giveaways, anything. I just and Ziad Ziad from Portable Mind said it's Christmas in July and yeah. you're Santa <laughs> and it's the cutest thing. <laughs> but yeah, so that's that's what it is, guys. So. Get online in the next 24 hours, all uh, four events are gonna be live. Ticket sales are gonna be live on Platinum List. Get for all, get, I don't know, I, I would suggest you come to all, get whatever you want. Just try to come down because it's, you know, showing that kind of support as well on ground is is, is gonna be beautiful. And uh, for, for the people that wanna support from abroad, if, if uh, Mike Angelo wants to, to show some love um, what, what can they do from, from outside the country? Well, I mean, oh, like I said, we're going to be cross-posting it. So definitely tune in, um, share the link with people to tune in. Uh, we want to be as loud as possible and get as, you know, as much reach as possible. Um, but yeah, I mean, the f at the bare minimum, just showing up to give your time to these incredible bands and to truly get to know them. For, for me personally, that's where it starts, you know, like that's all I ask for. Yeah, 100%. Like, you know the guys, like they, they deserve this and they're such great souls. So I want the world to know that too. When I was talking to um, to Big Hass on, on the podcast, I was, I was, we were trying to get, I was trying to figure out, there's always a brand of people that initiate these like homegrown uh, kind of uh, initiatives and, and they, 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 they do 
all these things to kind of help promote the scene. And I was lumping um, myself and him talking about why, why would you ask a band to come on a show and talk about themselves? Why would you put on a massive talk show with a lot of moving parts to streamed live to promote the, the scene? And um, there's got to be like, there's the, the, the people that go for that stuff always have like a screw loose. There's got to be <laughs> some sort of insanity. You mean the people who create this stuff for others or the people who attend this stuff? And the people who create the so stuff. So me and Bogdan, e- exactly. basically. Oh, definitely there's screws missing. Definitely. Yeah. It's it's the people that like start uh, web scenes. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and, 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 and when I know Soul uh, is in the house as well. Soul is, is also working on a couple of ideas to promote uh, the local scene and and, and start um, you know showing showing new acts and new releases and talking about it to to a bigger audience and stuff like that. Like you gotta you gotta be slightly insane to to like there's always there's always something that that uh, because how many how many musicians are in the city? As as much as everyone tunes in and helps, there's always that one loud voice that goes, "I'm gonna start something." <laughs> <laughs> so do you do you agree with that, or do you even see it? Like, is there is there any truth to that? The, um, uh, being crazy, yeah, I think we're all a bit crazy. Thank God. Um, I I do like to get uncomfortable. I don't like playing it safe in general. Um, but at the same time. It's just something I've done since I can remember, like like a calling. And it yeah. came up in one of my healing sessions that my purpose is to guide. Um, so I've always wanted to create initiatives like the Rock Camp for Girls, which was to build self-esteem in young girls through music. So it's it's always been in my blood, to be honest. And maybe because of that, it's a lot of opportunities to support a community have fallen on my lap. Mm-hmm. As a, like, you know, it's like both ways. So am I crazy? Yes. Uh, is that what's making me want to do this? No, it's just built in. Um, I am. I appreciate all the little things in life. And like I said, in my journey, 14 people at my launch, over 30 throughout the six years. Yeah. 30 people involved with me musically, let alone the people who have supported on other things. So I've had my fair share of love from the community and... For me, there's nothing more beautiful than to show appreciation by, you know, giving back. So it's just pretty much this, like th- they call it karma, but I think it's something we should just apply in life, you know, and it, it's just worked out so beautiful. I've never, I was telling my friend today, I've, since we started Asper Casper, I've never had to knock on a door. Yeah. Like it's just been open doors and for a reason. So I trust in this formula. I really do. And and this gives me so much joy. Like I'm, I've never produced the show from A to Z and me and Bogdan are two people doing that and I'm learning. And, and it's just, it's, if I was doing something not music related, I would probably be like, fuck this shit. You know, I'm, I'm crazy for doing this. But this fuels me, man. This you're, gives me like... You, I, you feel super excited. Like I, I, can, I love this the music. The energy is bouncing <laughs> off It's me. music, yeah. organizing, hosting, having fun. Yeah, it's everything I love into one project. No, it's literally like this is this is something that's great, man. Yeah, 100%. what are you talking about? I'm so happy. And uh, the, the the four bands you picked, um, did did you guys pick them based on their work, your vibe with them? Uh, just how how did that go about? It's a good question. Uh, we we wanted bands uh, because, and obviously we we'd love to have solo acts as well, but we wanted. Bands, because you know, there's a lot in how and band members. Because it's more of a challenge too. Yeah, but it's it's a challenge, but it's something that's also you know. Sometimes you see an artist's personality and how they they bond together and how yeah. they they treat each other and and the stories they tell about each other. So we wanted to add that. We wanted to have that comical camaraderie uh, vibe. You know, I am in a band and and I you know I don't like solo and I love like we have so much fun every time we rehearse and yeah. so I really appreciate that connection and that bond that gets created. And that's another way for people to to fall in love with them. You know, there's you as an individual, there's you and how you work with other people, and then there's the music and all that. Yeah. So I definitely knew I wanted bands in the beginning. Um, and I, I mean, I reached out to, to a few bands. And for me, it could have been five episodes and six episodes if the bands were available. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's, it's four because these four happened to be here uh, and wanted to join. Had there been more bands, definitely. Um, I did consider like all of them almost that were in town. And then I called the ones 
that weren't in none of the members were yeah i mean most of the people are gone yeah yeah i spoke to to jay info uh she was in england uh you guys i know you have josh who's far um uh, two of my guys play for imbu um they have kids and i know they've been socially responsible right now so that was pretty much a selection hey bands do you want to be a part of this? Yes. Okay, four of you, so four episodes. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Allow the rest were down. We'll do six. We're putting in the same work. You yeah. know? So I would love that. Uh, but yeah, it's a matter of who's around, but bands, definitely bands. And yeah, I mean, definitely I've heard these bands. They, they, they're great. They're legit. They're, they're good people. They, they represent, you know, good values. Um, and that's what I want to, to, to show on. Uh, but it's funny with portable mind because we had, we had a chat the other day and they seem to think they're pretentious portable mind think yeah. they are pretentious yeah i've never seen it until they kept saying we are we are it was, it was kind of funny i th- i mean uh gorgon's in the chat uh he That's says why it's I'm so cool to be this. part of this uh love to carla um i i don't know if it's maybe because they listen to tool <laughs> <laughs> I just I I, uh, I have a thing about tool fans, but uh, um, I thought it could be because Gorgon opened the door with the robe, silk robe, and a Chardonnay glass. But maybe no, we I'm... like that. Oh, okay, that's a, that's a good thing. Gosh, I don't know what you're into, <laughs> but yeah. So uh, uh, no, I I I um I don't know. I think I think people some people branded uh, Zvengali as pretentious in the beginning as well. There's there's always a uh, if you're on stage, it's almost like uh, 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 what's it called. God damn it! The, like a boxer mentality. When you're on stage and you're like, "I'm the best. I'm I'm gonna oh. do." It. Kind of metal bands have that, like, "We're we're fucking killing it right now on stage." Mentality. But that's good. Um, but a lot of people don't like that. What do you mean? Like the you, the the whole audience? I've seen audiences respond to you guys and react and. Yeah, but the guys in the back are like, these guys are fucking idiots. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I need to pay attention to those guys. I've been looking it's, in their it's faces. The, I call it the impress me, bro. I'm too busy dodging mosh pits usually <laughs> at the events. I'm small. No, there, and there's always a guy in the back, arms folded, head up. Yeah, but he's, he's just, secretly enjoying he's it. He's just Trust like, me. impress me. Trust me, he's, he's enjoying it. <laughs> when you convert that guy. <laughs> that's, your, that, yeah. that's your milestone? When, 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 when the guy in like the... the old school Slayer shirt is like, I don't like clean singing and I don't want to mosh to this. When that guy's in the front, I'm like, yeah, yeah, we did something cool. You did something cool. (laughs) No, I think you bring a great energy to the stage, guys. So uh, Thank you. But yeah, I I don't know if pretentious is the right word. I'm I'm, going to pay attention now with you guys and both of them. I'm going to go back to videos and watch and try to see. (laughs) Try to see. Have you ever been labeled as as anything like... Well, now that I think about it, like... Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> maybe maybe there's a guy in the back of your maybe, show. Maybe, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've been told we have good energy, but uh, my, my biggest critic is my, my mom, so I don't think anyone can like it. <laughs> she tells it like it is, and yeah. this is what I want from her. Uh, she'll say, People want to dance, Carla. And I'm like, well, not everyone wants to dance. Like, some people want to connect. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. I mean, please let us know if you have different opinions, uh, whether or not we're pretentious or... Uh, I think I think you, it, it's it's part of being an artist. Like at some point, you, it, it is at the end of the day performing for people. You yeah. are putting uh, things that you wrote, uh, songs that you wrote, instruments that you've learned all this time to play. You gotta you gotta enjoy it. Like if you're there not showing off, it doesn't make any sense. No, of course. Like exactly, we we have to have that mentality, and I don't think a lot of us do. Uh, I'm this is something I'm working on, like appreciating myself and loving what I do and then you know so and but when I'm on stage naturally that happens because I'm just I go in a state of trance yeah uh, but I agree with you like this is our work this is us working very hard to come to a stage with this beautiful quality music and exposing ourselves through music and expressing and yeah. it's a very vulnerable and like momentous moment to waste away and not like own it and then yeah a hundred percent I'm with you are you speaking of that would um would Asper Casper or you uh, a solo be uh, be doing anything on at Finland in terms of music? Yeah, no, I think I'm going to be hosting it. I don't know if I mentioned that. I'm going to be hosting the show. What I do want to do, I'm not going to lie to you, is once we're done with the episodes on one of the nights, I do want to bring the band in and make use of the beautiful setup and sort of also create content for for Asper Casper, 100%. but it, would, it wouldn't be live. Maybe yeah. we'll do some behind the scenes shots. But... It just, this, this time around, <clears throat> it feels like it's for the community. Yeah. And I'm just a, a player, like, involved, you know? 
That's super cool. Um, it, everything in me is telling me that. So I'm happy to just host it. That's going to give me a lot of joy. And uh, yeah, and then see how we can benefit from it. But again, the, the bands are the, the main highlight. Shout out to the bands. Shout out to the bands, I I'm swear. I'm excited, man. Yeah, me um, too. Let's, uh, let's go through the chat again. There's a, there's a whole bunch of people. Uh, I'm just uh, a lemur. Hello, what's up? Thank you for tuning in uh, on Twitch. Um, I would love to know uh, what's going on in Freak's head. Get him, please. Uh, we, we've uh, you've yeah, had Freak on I've the had, show. I have had Freak on the show. Uh, I think it was episode thirty. It might have been, but yeah, um, but we'll definitely uh, need to get him up. He's he's uh, getting uh, he's releasing a new album in January. Which guys, I'm very there's sixty eight episodes. Like check them out. They're there's all a, good. There's yeah, a whole like, lot of episodes. And I recommend. Like this is part of getting to know. Um, Individuals in the scene as well, guys. Go back; they're there for a reason. Check them out, really. Yeah, I um, I can't believe it's been sixty eight. Yeah, episodes. me too. But I was there the twentieth, so yeah. now. T- t- yeah, damn. it's it's a it's a big one. Um, is Serge still getting the sixty ninth one? Yeah, he Serge, had him? Serge, oh, he's no, holding that. He's, yeah, okay. he's got sixty nine. He wanted sixty six because it was the closest to six six six. Yeah. Oh uh, wow. Obviously, okay. he wanted uh, he wanted to represent his. Middle yeah. <laughs> But um, but then this whole Corona thing uh, happened. Uh, we we got in contact the with scare, someone yeah. that was in positive, and uh, they were like, "You have to test. Even if you're negative, you got to quarantine for two weeks." And there's this whole or- ordeal of like, "Are we are we gonna infect people? Are we not yeah. infected?" Are we, anytime anyone would like sneeze or cough in the house, where <laughs> it was like like yeah, a no, like I- a vampire came out. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was. Uh, it, it, that's why I canceled sixty six. I did a little update kind of a podcast, and uh, and then uh, but Serge sent. Uh, actually, Misho was the one who suggested it. Serge should get sixty nine. All right, All right. <laughs> so stay tuned, guys. Next episode, sixty nine. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the red light will really play. Yes, off yes, yes. <laughs> um, Khal Tamim says, uh, "In for whoever needs a loud a- asshole." <laughs> uh, Gorgon uh, is uh, glad to be a part of it. Um, Mike Angelo saying ice cream or frozen yogurt. I am lactose intolerant, <laughs> but will make an exception for frozen yogurt. Vegan ice cream. Ugh. <laughs> I, I don't have a sweet tooth. Like give me a burger any day over ice cream and I will, I'll be happy. Good. Yeah, I like that. I'm a carnivore, a savory. Uh, yeah. Uh, Brendan saying portable mind is a top tier stuff. So good live. Uh, shout out to Brendan. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, yeah, man, I'm excited. I'm excited. Uh, go check out the page uh, at Fennan. Um, confidence is a good thing uh, from Mike. We make sure that we did things right and spread such as Bengali plague. And for that, we got called pretentious. Uh, fuck it. Find us guilty. <laughs> Preach. Carla, send me, uh, send me love to mama. What's it, Habibi? What's it? Uh, Max is saying Carla uh, gave good vibes when I first saw her perform. Uh, she was sign- singing blind and she kept smiling at the audience and still do. Um, yeah, man, I, I remember I told you, I think the first time I saw you guys uh, perform as a band was at the album launch in uh, Stereo. Yeah, that was, that was November 2016. That's crazy. Yeah. And I remember, I remember, I, I, I forgot what, I think I was with Gorgon, um, might have been Asad Laiz from Bofeng Su. Uh, and I was just like, God damn, this is like really good stuff. <laughs> like the performance, people were changing instruments and people yeah, were switching on and off. 14 different musicians. It was crazy. It was, it was a lot of work. It looked like a lot of work and it sounded fucking amazing. Right? And that was one of the things that stood out to me. You were like super engaging with the, with everyone in the crowd. You were doing the, the uh, shout out to all the old metalheads. You were doing the Iron Maiden reference. Just, <laughs> just like... You over there, I see you. You know, we worked hard for that. And and for me, when I feel supported by the musicians that are with me on stage, and I had 14 incredible musicians, all you can do is enjoy it. Like you, f- you trust that everything is under control. And I did. From that point, that's it. You know, خلاص. my attention is to the audience. Yeah. And then I love that moment where, I'm, where I just, obviously I, I start off and then once I feel like خلاص, I need to step out of that. I'm, I just enjoy the show. Like I enjoy the show myself. I enjoy the audience. It's it's, it's really amazing. But Gorgon, like man, Gorgon, <laughs> Gorgon was a big part of that because you know how Gorgon is organized and he organizes the Desert Experiment and how many musicians are in Desert Experiment? 30, 40? Yeah, I think so. So having him at the launch, everything was mitle <laughs> lera, as they say. <laughs> like, like, nothing could go wrong, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, he uh, he gives me anxiety with his Excel sheets. I love it, man. I, I can't. And I I, I, I I struggle with Word documents. 
Yeah. So um, when he pulls up like a multi, I don't know even know what's called. You know when there's tabs at the bottom <laughs> of an Excel sheet and like you change one thing and it's linked to a yeah, formula. I'm a finance background. I love. This I stuff. know. I see. I I, I studied filmmaking. Oh, I yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do shit. Oh, yeah, when I see a good Excel sheet, I'm like, woo. Yeah. No. That gives me that gives me major anxiety. Yeah. Um, uh, Freak is not on unmuted. Uh, he means uh, Sol is saying on at Fennan. Oh yeah, for uh, but sure. But since I made the suggestion, Carla has made it clear it's uh, for Ben, so no worries. Um, yeah, but yeah. Uh, uh, also, Freak has a really cool live setup. He he performs like a metalhead. I remember having a conversation with him about uh, about his background and he's a, he's a metalhead. Yeah, I, I remember you had that discussion. It's interesting when you find this out about musicians who are doing something like my, guess what my favorite genre, what do I listen to in the car and at home? What would you think I listen to? Not Feroz, no. Uh, I was going to say, I was going to say old school, uh, uh, more like uh, old school rock, like old, like Duran Duran. Well, I love Duran Duran, but my car, old school hip hop and R&B. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Man, like 90s, 2000. Like yeah. that's my style. A lot of people don't know that I, I, I'm a big rap fan as well. Yeah. Well, they do now because uh, 68 episodes in, I've been yeah. talking about rap and stuff. But no one, no one, I know like every word to every Tupac uh, song. Yeah. <laughs> I know, but we, we are guilty of this. It's easy to assume um, what someone's into just based on, you know, what they sing or, or what they look like. And it's, we are all guilty of these uh, misconceptions. Yeah. yeah. Um, J- uh, books and covers. <laughs> don't yeah. judge a book. Yeah, yeah, of course. But it's, it's also one of the things that, um, I don't know if it's because of the times and because everything is like genre specific. Like even when you go on Spotify, you have to, yeah. you know, search for the genre. Like I remember asking you even on, on the last episode is what genre is Asperger? Because you guys do a bit of everything. It's the border uh, the, or the umbrella, sorry, is, is alternative. Yeah, a bit of in the alternative kind of thing. But yeah, it's everything. You can't because really I genre love, specify it. You know, because I'm, I'm a songwriter as well. You know, as a songwriter, you're not limited. I mean, I, I love so much, yeah. so many songs. So I will create a bit of everything and they'll always lean towards one thing or the next. But then we, we also discuss an Asper Casper and having a direction. Mm-hmm. So I could still write my songs and release them you know, and then, but for Asper Casper, have a certain like uh, tone. Yeah. But screw that, man. Like, I just want to put whatever I want to put out there. You know, I, I I have a different attachment to every song, and and yeah, I don't want to limit myself. I love so many genres, and they do come into play when I'm making music. In uh, in our last album, uh, Sayonara, which was released uh, March 13th of this year, horrible time. <laughs> <laughs> horrible. 13th, yeah. Come on. Uh, no, actually, it was twentieth. Friday the thirteenth was supposed think, to be the show. Think of it this way: everyone was had to be at home, so they surely had to listen to something. Yeah, but we we had so much uh, riding on on performances that we ah, we, we had to tr- tr- yeah. and travel and stuff. Um, but uh, on that album, we have a song called "Better Off," which is completely clean. Is that the one, the slow one that Josh yeah, sang. That Josh sang yeah, that completely clean, no growling, no yeah. nothing. And um, we sat down and we had a discussion like. Does this even sound like Svengali? We're like, it does, because it is us. We wrote this. Exactly. Like, this is something we collectively put together. Uh, Josh is the singer in the band. He sings a couple of clean choruses and stuff, but he can pull off a full song. So that is it. There's no genre like uh, gate that you have to pass through. Yeah, I think also something t- to really take into account is the bands here are so diversified. Like my band has five, six different nationalities. Uh, different backgrounds as well. So everyone's bringing their own touch, you know, yeah. it's bound to create something unique and it's bound to create different things at different times. So it's all part of the journey, I guess, you know, each song is going to hold a memory of who was a part of it, where you were in time and you would keep evolving. So I, I don't like this things staying as they are. Yeah. Like, if, like you said, the energy's in it. It is you guys, the efforts there, the love is there. It is yours. Yeah, hundred percent. It is yours, hundred percent, and I've, it'll resonate with different people. Yeah, hundred percent, exactly. So I think I, I, it was um, isn't that song specifically? We got a bunch of messages from people that don't normally listen to Svengali, like, oh, I checked it out because I heard this one. Exactly. And uh, and like you said about knowing the person's personality, to some degree, that kind of played that part. You showed part. vulnerability. Yeah, guys. they were like, like, oh shit, they they sang about that. Let's yeah. check out the other stuff. So even when I am sh- screaming, they're like, oh no, but. 
there's a range, there's a dynamic range there. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Which I think uh I think doesn't happen often with metal bands. Guys, metal bands. Be a be a little more vulnerable. I mean, uh, nothing else matters. Like it's it's amazing. But I'm not gonna lie, some of the covers, the more chilled out covers that were done, you know, actually sound so good. Like yeah. chilled and acoustic and I mean, this song, however way you play it, it's going to be incredible. But but even that, for that time, yeah. Metallica fans were fr- flipping out. Like, how can you release a song that's so chill? Yeah, yeah, I'm telling you. Like, for me, I'm not a heavy metal rocker, you know, but, you know, th- that, that became a channel for me to appreciate that song, you know, because I heard a version that resonates with me and my style. Yeah. And I paid attention, and then I paid attention to the lyrics, and then that made me love the original version and yeah. the band, because I'm like, wow, like, this is good stuff. So it's all about the different channels, you know, we, we don't have to limit ourselves to one. Not at this stage, I guess, in our career as well, you know? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And I think I think covers, I, I've, this, this is why I was telling you last time that um, people that can learn a cover and perform it in their own way is such a skill that I personally don't have that, uh, that I always find... It'd be like, interesting if you growl... Uh, Hit me, baby, one more time, or some, something like that. <laughs> Someone's done that. Someone's done that. If you guys, uh, uh, I think uh, Children of Bodom covered. But it was uh, more like uh, Malo. I don't know about the growling. They, they they did a whole they did the whole rendition with the guitar solo and everything. Wow. Uh, but uh, see that that for me is like I can't I can't dissect something that someone's already put out, and and then fuck with it. Really? Like I just I can't unhear it the way it's supposed to be heard. Okay. But I, it's such a skill to be to to own something and put it out in a completely different new way, which which I think is is a completely new, like it's a, it has to be a, a yeah. an amazing yeah. skill. Like people that play forty songs a night, yeah. uh, and it still sounds like the band instead of the cover, is. Yeah. An insane skill. I don't want to gloat because I see it differently. I'd be gloating if I saw it as this amazing skill. But like, I, I do it often. But it's also like what I'm capable of doing with my voice. You know, like some songs mm-hmm. are hard to sing. So all I can do is sing it the way I would sing something. Oh, okay. And then somehow yeah, it works out. You know yeah. what I mean? It sounds unique. <laughs> but it's just me not being able to replicate, you yeah. know, especially with the, the classics. Uh, so yeah, g- give it a shot, I guess. And yeah, choose hard songs because then you have to find another way to do exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> it, it has to be like if... if Zvengali was to cover Britney Spears. Like it has yeah, to be yeah, that. It has if, to be. If we cover Hate Breed, it's going to be yeah. a little easier to, yeah. to get away with. So yeah, yeah. Find that song where, where you know how it goes, but you're forced to sing it differently because it's just no other way. Yeah, just 100%. Try it out. Send me. I want to see that. Let's, um, we can jump into the chat real quick. Uh, I think we were down there after Khaled hit on my mom. <laughs> um... Where there we go, uh, burger. My uh, first decent uh, video was on burgers. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, she's a carnivore. I love her even more now. Old school rock and hip hop music. Uh, I'm a metalhead who uh, loves uh, Vivaldi. Vivaldi. Mm. That's uh, that's very. Uh, Mike Angelo. I can see because uh, Mike Angelo is a, a chef who's uh, putting out um, like tutorial videos, wow. cooking videos and stuff. And okay. uh, what's, I, what's I, his? Uh, I think we'll check him out. Uh, Mike Angelo on Facebook. All right. Just, uh, I, I, w- I want to see you doing like a silent uh, cooking video with just classical music blasting in the background. Or Asper Casper music. Asper Casper music blasting. I can sing for you as you cook. There you go. Yeah. We're, we're bridging, see, at Fennan. It bridges at all the Fennan. games. <laughs> Um, Soul saying damn specific genre marketing uh, nonsense. Why can't we just make music we enjoy? Whatever it is, uh, damn algorithms are ruling or uh, humanity. A hundred percent. I'm with you on that. Yeah. Uh, Mike Angel saying uh, amen to that. Uh, so yeah, vote soul for president. That's what I say. So what what is now that you're in the in the weeds in the thick of it when it comes to like streaming, putting on an online show that's also has audience uh, in the venue. What is your take on the future? Of of where everything's going. How how's you put on uh, open mic nights every Saturday, but there's social distancing. You guys have yeah. how when when is everything going to go back to normal? Is it going to go back to normal? Hello, when you were talking about technicalities, I also want to give a shout out to Romario. You guys know Romario. I think he's also a member of music scene who's jump on jumped on board at Fanland to do 
everything music related. Shout out to Romario Fernando. Yeah, he's um, he's, he's the, usually on on these calls, but maybe. Yeah, he's uh, he's yeah. the bassist and uh, vocalist of Fat Randall, and yeah. uh, he's also been on the on the podcast. They're excellent. I I went. They came to Berlin, and I met up with the guys there. Him and Khalifa. It was brilliant. So he's also supporting the scene. That's awesome. Um, where to go from here? Uh, look, part of this. I think what this happening in the world now is just to tell us to just calm the fuck down and stop preempting and you know you don't have control on everything that happens um so i'm not thinking that far i'm not gonna like lie to you i'm just doing what i can now you know in the near uh working with what i know from now at least yeah. you know plus one one month at most uh, because nothing like you said like we don't know. We just don't know what could happen. And we never uh, saw what happened coming. Yeah, we never saw that what happened. And this is the thing we plan and plan and plan, and we completely forget that there's so much, so like we're so small in this huge world, and there's so much happening outside of us that we can't control. And this yeah. is where you hear people saying, stay present. I'm not saying don't plan. Plan, but definitely be ready to adapt your plans to other things. Mm -hmm. like that flexibility is, is important. So, you know, I'm here. It looks like it's clear for the next four weeks. I'm going to go ahead with it. God forbid something happens. I will trust that it's for the better. Um, and then just sort of work that way and until things become clearer and clearer. Because we have no other choice. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not a choice. Acceptance. Acceptance. Accept. Acceptance is the the key word for for uh, yeah. all of that. I mean, all you can do with things that are outside of your hands is accept. Yeah. And just, I, I would say, like us talking about healing and therapy, like this lockdown and this COVID situation, I mean, has really forced a lot of people to sit down with themselves. Yeah. And if you've been struggling to do that, then you know, there's a reason for that. And and I suggest you find a support system, whatever works for you. I'm not preaching for therapy or anything, but you know, it's been a time to reflect and, and, and get to know myself better than, than ever. And it's going, not easy, man. Going back to, uh, to a question uh, Misha asked in, uh, over on Twitch, H having gone uh, through um, uh, healer sessions and the therapy and stuff, is it hard to, to balance the ego and, and uh, the musicianship side of things with the finding yourself and stripping yourself of that? Like, is there a balance between the two? Um, look, e ego, ego is a mechanism we all use to protect ourselves. Like, that's going to be there at all times. Uh, for me personally, being a musician and being on stage is probably the one... One of the two times where I'm completely in my element mm -hmm. and I'm functioning from a place of love and passion for music and not ego. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, ego is a heavy word. Now. No one likes to talk about ego. No one wants to think about themselves as like, have anything to do with ego. Yeah. But it is something we do, all of us, to, to protect ourselves. Especially as artists, I think... It's like there's unhealthy and healthy doses, obviously. Yeah, like I envy people who like go up and talk and blow up their own ass. And, and I cringe and I'm like, why am I cringing? Like I need to find that. You know, it's a thin line to an ego and, and really self-love and appreciation. And yeah. I think that's if I can master that through healing. Because um, then, then the balance is, is it confidence or yeah. is it like uh, that unhealthy dose of ego? But that's what I'm telling you, right? Because yeah. if ego's stepping up, then it means there's something missing. Yeah. Because ego usually steps up when something is, is lacking. Um, so yeah, that's one of the things I'm, I'm, I'm working on. And these are, I had a session today and this is what the healer called guns, like the guns we use to protect ourselves mm -hmm. and to show a different persona. But for me personally, I'm, I, my ego comes up in different scenarios. When it comes to music, relax, yeah, it would like, you know, I'm someone who can't take a compliment. If someone says, great song, and I'd be like, oh, my, uh, you know, like it's so hard. Um, but yeah, we're working on it. And uh, I, I definitely had um, two sets of, of myself. Uh, pe people saw one when, when, when I was like just hanging out and people yeah. saw a completely different one when I was music. But um, this podcast stripped me yeah. Of of that shelter. Like which one I, was you? The the uh, like which one did you really like? It was, was two your element. Exaggerate extremes of both. Really. So I'm I th I think I'm dead center. Wow. Okay. Um, Interesting. 
I'm not the like smash a bottle, get yeah. drunk and yeah. go on stage and scream. And I'm not the super chill, reserved, like dude in the corner kind you of thing. You come off that way. I, I, I yeah, because I, I feel like that was more comfortable for me than trying to actually yeah. have a conversation with yeah. someone. But then uh, then with this podcast, I just learned to be like, you, we started podcast. I started a podcast without liking to talk to people. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, I learned more about myself in these like sixty-eight episodes about how I deal with things, especially when like someone's telling a story of something they went through and stuff, and I relate to it and I start opening up. I was like, God damn, this is this is therapeutic. I, <laughs> I want to hug you, man. Man, this is exactly it. Just talking and and you know, if we keep telling ourselves the same things, we're never going to learn. But then if we if we talk and share perspective, for me, what's coming up recently is perspective. Yeah. You know, just seeing things from different angles. And I, I've gotten myself into so much trouble because I'm so dead set on what I believe. Yeah. Um, so it's amazing to hear you say that. Uh, uh, for me, my element and true persona is on stage. And now I'm trying to sort of bridge like these two characters or move towards that in my everyday life yeah. as well. It's fascinating how complex we are. And, I, you know, I I get how in our community there's a lot of shame associated with seeking, uh, you know, m mental support or in terms of healing or therapy. But guys, we're so complicated, you know, and, and reaching out for help is... It's not shameful. No, relax. You know, if, if you have a, if you have a high tech machinery, you're going to get an expert, right? To fix yeah. it. If anything goes wrong, you know, if, if, if a lamp breaks at home, you're going to fix it yourself. So we D are those if complex this, creatures. If this screen turns off, I wouldn't know how to turn it back I'm on. I'm telling you. Imagine like, what yeah. happens in your brain. If we respect our complexity and, you know, and just also just step down from our ego and ask for help. Yeah. It's, it's going to serve us like good. No one else. So do it, do it for yourself. But, uh, yeah, man, it's been interesting. I, uh, it's amazing what you said about your show too, because I'm also hosting a um, support group online every Monday. Um, and it's been so much talk about self-acceptance and self-love and just relating and yeah. seeing things from so many different perspectives. And I have changed so much like as a result of that. That's been my therapy yeah. because through creating a platform for people to share this, I am learning so much about myself. Things that I would only see from Adel Tesan, Syrian, Arab, you know. <laughs> but now I'm hearing so many different scenarios and it's just breaking my guard, like putting my guard down and just understanding myself better, you know, and, and other people. So it does play a big part and I'm really happy to hear that it's, you've it, identified it, you know. Yeah, it, it took me a you while. You see the it, shifts in yourself. Yeah, 100%. And, and it did take me a while. And I think um, one, of, one of the things I love about the podcast is... Uh, not just the outward uh, uh, kind of learning how to how to communicate the emotion, communicate the thought, and all that stuff, but just listening to people's stories, man. You get so much, um, especially in a time where we couldn't travel. Yeah. Just hearing stories from around the world of different people's journeys and stuff. It was it was like uh, refreshing. It was it was cool to see like how many people have done how many things throughout their life and gotten to the positions they're in and stuff. And um, yeah, it, it's it's. I don't think it'll ever be uh, it'll ever be something I'll take for granted. It's it's such a cool thing to have. What do you do? I I sit around and we have conversations with people that are doing some crazy ass things. That's all. Yeah, you've literally exposed yourself to sixty eight people on this show alone. Yeah. Uh, well, less because some people came twice, but in every time you're learning something. One hundred percent. And and depending on where you are in your life things will hit you differently as well. A hundred percent. And I think that's what's cool about Atfenden is that we've had these bands, we've seen them perform before, we, they've been in the scene. Um, even people from outside of the scene uh, might have might have seen their music videos and stuff, but we get to sit down and uh, and you're going to poke at them, like as people, not just not just see them perform once and, and they walk off stage. Yeah. It's going to be getting to know the people more. And, and like some of the guys, it was beautiful to hear them say, if you want to ask me about this, you can. They yeah. want to put it all out there. Yeah. Like, you know, so it's 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 really good. And I'm, I'm very proud of them to hear them say that. And I am going to do that whether they like it or not. So the <laughs> fact that they're keen <laughs> makes me feel a little bit less guilty. Um, but yeah, you know, we are all human. We, we The more we connect on that level, I think the better this world will be, like genuinely. You know, these, these common things that we all go through. Like this group I started online is just basically... 
bringing people from different uh, genders, ethnicities, orientation, everything, like just diverse, diverse, and yeah. just talking about the stuff that we all relate to, whether we like it or not. Yeah. You know, and just that common ground that makes us all human. Like more of that, please, you know, and we're lucky in the UAE to have this diversity, but if we can start here and then sort of extend that, it, it will have a ripple effect. And it's all about the ripple effect. Even if you change individually and become a better person, it's going to have that ripple effect. Yeah. So it just has to start with us and, and our little communities and whatever we can do. 100%. Do you yeah. feel like we're, we're uh, more at an advantage here just because of the like population is so diverse? Yeah, I was having a chat with some friends. Like I don't have a racist bone in me. And I think the fact that I grew up um, in Saudi and here fully like um, just in touch and around and friends with uh, so many nationalities, so many races, everything, like everything and anything, you know, it's, it became the norm for me at yeah. such a young age, you know, and it's so sad to see all that shit still happening um, outside. So I, yes, definitely. One of the things I'm very grateful for uh, about for being in the GCC is this. I mean, in Syria, you don't find that. In Lebanon, you don't find that. Yeah. Um, and, and when I first got to Jordan, I didn't speak Arabic. And um, Oof, that must have uh, been hard. A mutual friend of ours, uh, Muhammad Taifi, <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually uh, actually wanted to to fight me. Like we were kids, but he he wanted he wanted to get into a fight because he's like you're Arab, and I was like yeah, like, but you don't speak Arabic, and he didn't speak uh, a lot of English at the time. And uh, he was like, this is pissing me off. I want to I want to fight. And I was like, what? Because I don't because I don't speak a language like. I Such didn't grow bunny. up here. I don't know what you're talking about. And um, but that was Jordan. That was like I had to, like survival instinct kicked in. It's like you have to fit in. You know what I mean? And then yeah. when you grow up, you're like, no, actually, I I kind of want to do things my way. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, no, definitely, it's it's a plus. Like I I would say if I have a family, like I, you know, you want them to grow up somewhere like this. Yeah. Yeah, and I I don't know what I would do with my kid if they showed like some form of racism. I'll bring th- out. I'll bring out the Arab, uh, <laughs> Arab. <laughs> the, the disciplinary measures. No, I'm sure. I'm sure all our children won't, because we are their role models, and yeah. we have to understand the responsibility that comes with that. You know, today in the, the healing session that I did, um, she said, "God doesn't. Uh, children don't understand what God is until they're five years old. So until they are five, their mom and dad represent that." godly spirit for yeah. them, you know? So it's really on the parents to... to I'm gonna I'm gonna milk it until he's five. Yeah. I'm just gonna... <laughs> yeah, I am, I am Lord. <laughs> I, I, my, I command my, you. <laughs> my number one goal is to get him old enough uh, and, and teach him how to make coffee and bring it up to the, the bedroom wow. every morning. Goals. If I, if I do that... I'm then... calling child services. <laughs> <laughs> It, that's hot, that's a hot drink. I hope it's iced coffee at least. No, we can find like you know you could it could be like in a box uh, or right. as long as it it gets up to the room we're okay. good. And then, right. and then and then he could do his thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, up until he's five because he doesn't know better. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, and then he will start making then, him coffee. Yeah, exactly. And then he'll figure things out. And he'll, yeah. he'll be a lot smarter than me. But it's the babies. <laughs> That's a great name for a cafe, by the way. Barista babies. That's that's but guys. That's we're violating the... so many rules right now. Let's just move on. Um, we're jumping into the chat real quick. Uh, uh, I'll do uh, it with Asper Can Asper Casper Tunes any day from Mike Angelo. Uh, let's hook it up, bro. Awesome, man. It's everywhere, online, everywhere. Um, Mike Angelo and Silent do not go in the same sentence. <laughs> uh, Khaled is right. Uh, so saying thanks, Carla, but my uh, prison record means I can't run for political office. Well, you can for me, dude. Like, seriously, you're probably a much better candidate than everyone else that's doing it. So <laughs> bless you. You got my vote, man. Um, and uh, so I'd love, uh, uh, l- let us know what you think uh, in the chat about um, about Fennan and, and everything that uh, that we're talking about. Because uh, Sol's got some some interesting ideas. And I think, honestly, you should hit uh, Carla up as well. Yeah, please um, do. Uh, Adnan can connect us. I'd yeah, love to hear that. 100%. Uh, Matt, true self-reflection is a beautiful thing. We've uh, all seen the evolution of the show. And it's been a great journey. Uh, long live the tribe. Yeah, uh, shout out to Michelangelo. Yeah, man, it's um, it's one of those things. It's it's. Uh, I, I was talking to you about the um, the streams, right? The the audio streams on on the 
of the podcast. Yeah, we were yeah. trying to figure out where everyone's at. And the the thing that always gets me, and I want, if you're listening to this right now, I want you to uh, either message Asper Casper on Instagram or me on Instagram. Because there's a, a large number of people uh, that, that stream this show on audio. That's amazing. Oh, I saw you have 80,000 plus uh, plays. Yeah, it's, it's a crazy amount of streams. That is brilliant. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The wallet. <laughs> yeah, with, with, oh, it says 0.0 money. <laughs> 0.0 money in my wallet. But, but Spotify and, and Apple Podcast uh, streams are, are uh, super insanely uh, high in terms of like numbers and stuff. And I don't know how it works. <laughs> I want to. I want to be like. All right, cool. So we got whatever eighty thousand over the last sixty episodes. What do I do with it? I know, right? Like, what <laughs> do you do? The, and and the people that tune into the the video streams uh, that, that that are in the chat and we're interactive with aren't the people that listen to the audio because they've already watched the show. So yeah, who's listening to the audio? <laughs> that's so interesting. But you know, I guess. Yeah, that's so interesting. I mean, keep going, I guess. Yeah. And, uh, It's just what like someone was saying. Highlight, add this. I don't know if you have a press kit. I would add that number because then some people, people who want to promote on podcasts, might jump on board. Yeah, I want. I, um, I still don't know what uh, what unmuted, like in terms of longevity and stuff. What it's going to be? I, I'm definitely going to keep doing it. Uh, there was a time around the 50th episode where I was like, maybe I'm just going to stop, but. Uh, But with the support of the uh, the Patreon stuff, which is now paused, but uh, with their support, they gave me a boost, and we uh, built the setup, and then uh, I paused it. So so they're they're not being charged anymore. But um, I think as long as we have the setup and I can have cool conversations with people, I uh, I don't know about like sponsors and stuff yet. Yeah, no, I get you. I mean, we we started doing this because it's something we love, and yeah. the thought of it becoming commercial um, is difficult, but. Again, I'm learning so much this week. Um, apparently, part of being happy in life is to accept monetary benefits. Yeah. Um, so that's one way of you also looking out for yourself because we need it. That's the truth. We need that to survive. One of the one of the biggest uh, bombs that dropped for me was the the link between self worth and like financial worth like especially growing up as, oh, a, yeah. as a freelancer and stuff and you're always like oh no no don't worry I'll, exactly. I'll, I'll do it for half the price exactly. I'll do it for this uh, eventually started wearing down the like self-worth mental course. which That, <laughs> you're doing it you're doing this because you don't believe that your services deserve that much payment or reward you know so you're doing this out of lack of self-worth and then your self-worth is getting worse because you're doing it because you're doing it but It's not sitting well with you. Yeah. And that's, I actually, the reason I went to do the session today is because I have this project coming up and it's called Abundance. When you, you struggle to accept self-worth, self-love, self-reward. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I literally went to her, I said, look, I've poured my heart into this and I want it so bad. And I don't want to be the thing that blocks it because I can't receive success or, you know, gratitude or... I literally had a session just because of that, because I don't want to get stuck in this. Uh, But the self-awareness part yeah. is a huge yeah, uh, advantage. Yeah, no, I'm fully aware. <laughs> <laughs> fully aware. Like I, I procrastinate so much when it comes to things I do for me. But if someone asks me to do something in a heartbeat, it's done in a yeah. second. And that tells me something. I'm putting other people before myself. That's a big sign Yeah. that, you know, there needs to be some, some self-work in place and longevity I'm going to pull up the post because I think me and you had the same meaning of longevity until I saw this today. So you said longevity earlier. And here we go. She didn't put it up? No, she didn't put it up. So longevity is not how long, but it's what is done in that. However long the period of time is, what you do with it. What you've achieved in that. The, yeah, the quality yeah. of, you know what I mean? The quality of that timing rather than... So, Just doing it for a very long time. Yeah, yeah. So when you say longevity, were you talking about the how far it can go, or? I think yeah. When when I talk about longevity, it's it's almost like an up, not an across. Yeah, but apparently it's it's the it's the quality of however long something's been happening. For. Yeah. And this is obviously beautiful, and the fact that you still have people listening is. Thank yeah, and, and shout a lot out of to them, everyone like you know knows. what I mean, like. If it's if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But yeah. I know, but I know these pauses you speak of doing a passion project uh, with zero monetary value. Um, you know, especially when you have a family. In your case, 
there are times where you're like, fuck, I just want to stop this and like go back to reality. Yeah. Um, there's responsibility, there's bills to pay, there's there's hard work, There's you're putting a lot into it. I, but you have to love something so much to leave everything for it because there, these moments come so often. But yeah. then obviously because I have this love for it, I just overcome it every time. But it does get hard, man. 100%. Yeah. And but I think I think for looking at your uh, like journey, the the challenges uh, are the the like quitting uh, to do music full time or moving uh, to Berlin or coming back here and wanting to start at Fenden and and do Saturday jams. I it's it's more about the the people around you. Like you, you're very uh, inclusive. Yeah. Uh, it's not. It's not like a self struggle thing. It's like no, let's all do this together. Yeah. Uh, which is which is the, what I'm saying. What I was saying about the screw loose people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's 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 always like the. It's a bad example, but it's like a, <laughs> like a Charles Manson. Like let's round up the troops, you yeah, know. Yeah. And those are the people that are that are putting, uh, you know, the 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 websites, the reviews, and the podcasts and the shows and stuff together, which I think is um, like we're the people who are coming together for this project. We're all on the same journey. Like we're all doing things to elevate art and music in this scene. And we were talking about sponsors earlier for Atvena, and it's. it's to make it happen it's not to make money yeah. we're not even calling them sponsors we're calling them bar- like partners literally yeah. you know what they're, i mean they're putting in time and effort yeah and then one one of the partners we spoke to they said uh, do, you, do you, if you guys need money like we're genuinely short and we said look we're not here asking for money it's it's whatever you can give if you want to give and if it adds value to you like yeah. it's just if you're on board to support the scene in any way you can jump on yani that's it It's very simple, such a simple thing. Uh, yeah. Yes, if the money came, which I believe it will eventually, but that is not the purpose uh, of this project. Um, had it been, I don't think we would have had such amazing people join just for the sake of supporting the scene. You know? Speaking of supporting the scene, um, uh, Misho has a super cool uh, question from Twitch. Why do people in the Middle East uh, not support local acts making music in a foreign language but listen to a shitload of American pop and R&B music. Did you face this in your journey? Uh, everyone's journey is different, but uh, because I was working with the, uh, the music festival Wasla, um, which is bringing Arab alternative bands to the region, mm-hmm. uh, it's funny because the reason we started it is because it was in such a niche market here. Like these, these Arab alternative bands are huge internationally. Yeah. But here they're not. They're underrated, undervalued, underappreciated. So and bands like um, Murabba, Murabba, Mashrulela, Jadal, Suhad Messi, Emel yeah. Masluthi. Like I love these two women, and their music is incredible. Um, All Arabic speaking acts. Yes, incredible stuff. Um, so I think it goes back to being born with this. Again, not to generalize with this, you know, America music. Uh, that's the hub of music, you know. Uh, These, these beliefs that are rooted in us growing up, um, you know, I grew up thinking, oh, you know, because I'm Arab and not American, I can never be a musician. I wish I was American. I wish I was English. Mm-hmm. So, so I agree with you. Like there is more support for international acts than, than local acts. Um, but it's, you know, it works the other way as well. Like these Arab acts are so popular Uh, outside, so I guess it works out somehow, right? Yeah. Uh, but it would be great if we can start by appreciating our own music and then move on to the to the bar, Barraniat one. But so whatever, man, to each his own, right? If you're good and you're destined to make it, you're gonna make it in every in every place of the world. I so. think I think it, uh, I try to think about this uh, very often. I think there's a psychology of the local band and. Because we're in this part of the world, you're always the local band. You can't yeah. really tour. You can't. Yeah. You're playing. You're playing in the same city, and the local band is. You can't wear the local band T-shirt. Yeah. Because they're they're too, they're from here. They're from down the road. What are you talking about? Yeah. I'd I'd wear like an international band T-shirt. Right. Yeah. But the local band is just these guys from down the road, and that mentality is what stops people from really like soaking it in. But we're lucky to have a bunch of people from the scene that are super involved and super. Um, uh, supportive of, of local bands, but all over the world, I think 
Yeah. If you're local versus international, regional, whether you speak a foreign language or not, whatever yeah. it is, if you're from down the road, yeah, it's going to be a little harder to to have that like glitter factor. Yeah, and and people look people. Some people follow trends. Some people who really like, you know, listen to music and, and connect with it will support different bands. Um, don't forget as well, uh, Michelle. We don't get radio time. Like you play any shitty song over and over again on the radio. You're gonna like you're gonna get used to it. Like I find myself humming ridiculous tunes sometimes because the radio played it ten times. So that also, like it's on the stations here and you know, a lot of bigger organizations to to start highlighting the music that you're calling foreign language or Middle Eastern music. Like we don't have that, you know? We yeah. don't have that. So everything we, we like this American pop and army, that's all like being spoon fed to us consistently. So that plays such a big part as well. I'm sure if we played our music as much as they play all of that, then I'm telling you, we're going to be just as big. Yeah, you 100%. Know? What was um, anyone in the chat? I think uh, Soul and uh, and Mike Angelo would know this. What was that maple something in Canada where there's like a percentage of airtime that's given to uh, to local bands I'm just my sister's probably calling to say how can I uh, how can I watch this let me tell her oh yeah <laughs> I'm sharing it on Aspercast for you can watch it there always late always late to the party <laughs> unless it's a real party then you're there early <laughs> but um It, it, this is this is one of the the coolest things <laughs> ever. You're, as you're, when she watches this and she sees it, we're gonna clip it. And when she watches this and sees it, uh, you could just send her this clip. <laughs> no, she's her. she's all about this like fun, embarrassing stuff. She'd love it. She'll probably laugh. She doesn't get embarrassed <laughs> easily. She's she's crazy. Um, Maple laws, as also says. Yeah. So uh, in in Canada, uh, there's a percentage of airtime. That has to be given to Canadian artists yeah? on the radio. Yeah. Oh, wow. The maple laws, uh, which I didn't know about. Um, so, so what, they Angelo. kebab laws here? Like. <laughs> exactly. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's do shawarma laws. Yeah, mandi, mandi laws. <laughs> But imagine that. Imagine in the UAE, uh, let's not even say the Middle East. Imagine just in the UAE, there was, whatever, 10% airtime given to local bands by law. That's brilliant. Across the board. That's just, brilliant. You just have to give it to the local artists. And then that... It draws the traction. It, it gives them exposure. Then you're on the radio, also asking about it. You're you're doing a, a whole bunch of you know interviews and stuff because people have heard. That's that's kind of the the spark, right? That is beautiful. That's what I'm saying. Like we can only do so much. And that's the sad truth, you know. Uh, so and being in places outside where there's labels scouting artists and all that. Like with all due respect, to the ones here, I've never seen any of them at a show. You know, the big music labels. Yeah. <clears throat> None. You know, so that also, there's a lot of factors. There's a lot of factors. You know, you could be playing in Europe and some big shot could be passing by and can hear you play. Here, the chances are a bit slimmer, I yeah. think, you know. Unless but something, yeah, I, th I think I keep going back to it, but because I feel like it, the summary of everything we're talking about is something like a Tvenden, yeah. where where... It's it's a talk show, so you get to know the people. It's yeah. a performance, so you get to see them play. Yeah. It's interactive, so you're not just sitting there just watching. You're also part yeah. of the you're show. You're becoming part of a community. Exactly. Yeah. I think I think it, it summarizes uh, all of the stuff we were talking about. Yeah. Very and well. F&B and entertainment and giveaways and yeah. and 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 uh, Walid is doing a photo shoot for every individual that sets foot in there, which is also something you don't get often. Yeah, that's crazy. That's really really cool. Yeah, you wanna you want everyone to win, right? Yeah. You want everyone to. Come Come, have fun, leave happy. Be it the bands, be it uh, the people involved who are happy to create such a thing. Be it the audience, you know, who managed to be part of something, you know. And then they, th for them, for some of them, it's going to a gig, but little do they know how much of a role they're playing, you know, to support the music scene. Yeah, yeah. I always tell people, man, you don't know, you don't understand just buying a t-shirt. Yeah. And, and just rocking it on your way to the supermarket. Oh my God, I jump for joy every time one of my friends sends me a picture of them wearing like an Asper cat. Like, it's small things that go such a long way, yeah. you know? And it's because we're humble here. We're, we're humble artists, you know? So we appreciate the little things and telling you all out there, like, these small things mean so much to us. So thank you and show up to gigs and come down and support. That's awesome. I think that's, um, 
uh, uh, Dolores Patterson, what's up? Thank you for uh, for following. Um, I think that's a uh, that's a good a good spot to start winding down. Yeah, yeah. No, I think I'm getting also my I'm winding down too. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been at fun and nonstop, like yeah. genuinely. So so uh, we get to we get to yeah. I set up an office at home. Bit. I had the uh, Bogdan and Maya, who's helping with marketing, just come at from ten, and we left to come here. So it's. It's fun, but it's a lot of work, and yeah. uh, but it's there. It's almost there. I'm I'm super excited. I'm super super excited. Very very proud of everything you guys have been doing. But man. don't say what you're doing. Yeah, but the the tribe is involved. <laughs> uh, you guys, everyone tuning in will will uh, will be uh, hearing about all the all the stuff that goes on, and and you you get to see unmuted. You get to yeah, see unmuted. for sure. Be, be but yeah, please it. like uh, go to Atfan and Live. It's empty now, but just follow it because we're gonna put some updates and uh, platinum list all the way in the next twenty four hours. That's awesome. Yeah, awesome man. man. Um, thank you guys uh, for for tuning in. Uh, safe uh, on YouTube saying that's the dream about the Maple Laws. It exists in other countries too, from Seoul. Um, we can uh, overpower them using Spotify. <laughs> uh, just focus on Spotify. Forget the local radio yeah. from from Seoul. Uh, she's a phoenix. That was an intellectually that was intellectually enlightening. See, I had to out of all the words that I could have fucked up. Intellectually is the one that I stumbled over. Really? Just to prove a point. <laughs> just to prove a point to uh, to she's a phoenix. Um, but man, thank you, thank you so much for being here. It's always a pleasure, really, and I think. Every time I've come here, it's been a different circumstance, and it just was great timing for it. A so part three when uh, when the show's over. Oh yeah, and we'll talk Let's about how do it goes. That. Yeah. Oh my god, I can't wait! I can't wait. And um, just uh, out of tradition, uh, we we're gonna. I, I fucked this up last time. That's what, why. What I, that, are that's, these buttons? I'm like, I'm so jealous. This, this um, a homie of mine, Ahmed Munir, who's who's uh, a big part of the tribe. He's a big part of the Zvengali family. He's a big part of everything. Got I me love this. Ahmed. He he got me this to uh, to help out with the show. It's amazing. And this little thing controls everything happening over there. Um, so that's that's why I keep you need with. to get a button to get you that coffee you want <laughs> and not have your child. Yeah. Oh, that's that's Just the next step. Just put a bloody step. machine in your room, man. That's the Leave next the kid step. alone. No, the next step is for him to <laughs> to press the to press all the buttons here. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you to everyone that uh, tuned in live and joined the conversation in the chat. If you're listening to this on Spotify, Apple Music. Google Podcast or anywhere else, uh, hit me up. Let me know that you uh, listen to the podcast. Uh, follow Asper Casper on uh, on Instagram. Follow at, at Fennan Live on on Instagram and um, and come say hi. Come say hi if you're listening to this. Uh, join the conversation even after the fact. Uh, it's on YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook now. So uh, so there's a whole bunch of places where we can get in touch with you guys. And uh, yeah, man, thank you, uh, thank you, Carla, for for everything. Thanks, Habibi, and and please don't stop. Like it's just so beautiful. Thank you. And, uh, I won't. I'll I'll do. I'll and do if my ever best. you get to that point, like you said, the universe will th- chuck people at you who just say keep doing it. Yeah. So trust the flow, man. Uh, trust the flow. Manifest. Yeah, we love unmuted guys, don't we? We love unmuted. Then Manifest your This dreams. is why I have so much respect for you because you are literally doing. Something for the scene, and Mamat Asir, like you're doing it in the best possible way. Thank even you, the man. quality, even the engagement, um, and this is why it was such an easy thing when doing at Fanan to pick up the phone and say, Adnan, like come on board. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm super excited. Same. I love it. Wallah. So much respect to you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. If you could do the honors of saying, hit the outro. Hit the outro. Right